where entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. I did much better the second time than I did the first getting millions more votes in 2020 than I got in 2016, and likewise, getting more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country by far. And now, in order to make our country successful and safe and glorious, I will very, very, very probably do it again, okay? Very, very, very probably. From the man himself, I will very, very, very probably do it again. That's a uh, a non-committal commitment if I've ever heard one. What's up? This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. That was Donald Trump in Iowa yesterday. Kick it off. What's going to be Rally Palooza? He's somewhere today. I forget where. And then he's in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Then he's in Miami, Florida over the weekend. He's going to be rallying and campaigning for all of these Senate hopefuls. He's going to be rallying for Dr. Oz to get him across the finish line against John Fetterwoman, who was on The View today. But I'll be honest with you, I was a little disappointed. I was all jazz. I was all excited to have John Fetterman out on The View. Um, But they did it, you know, the way they do all John Fetterman interviews. He wasn't actually on The View. He wasn't in the studio. He was in his little office reading his little closed captioning. The women didn't get to get to pelt him with questions, you know, all at the same time like they do Ted Cruz because John Fetterman can't handle it. So I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of highlight. It wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be. How disappointing. Usually The View's disappointing just in general, but it was disappointing in a different way today. Yeah. It wasn't because of what they said. It's because of how, you know, milk toast and and boring and almost, I'll be honest with you, it all, because you had one person talking at a time and because you had John Fetterman answering the question that was asked of him, it really almost seemed for just a split second like I was watching an actual legitimate news program. Whoa, it was that's really, rare. Yeah, it was kind of, it, like it was like a Freaky Friday moment. I was like, where am I? What is happening? And the room started spinning. Uh, and then, of course, uh, then, of course, I, I turned it off and I, I um, you know, I just listened to some of my old podcasts and it brought me right back to, to reality. Yeah. <laughs> with a lot of people a lot of people like to do it now listen we have so much we got to get to today first of all uh the donald trump rally the donald trump information it is important and there's a leaked uh story now or there's somebody's leaking information which you know whenever it's about donald trump i tend to believe it because i think more people leak about donald trump than anything else leaked that november 14th is the date that he's chosen to announce that he is running for president a third time november 14th so let's let's go through the timeline here november 8th is next tuesday It is election day. It is the day that if you believe all the polls, if you believe all the pundits, if you believe the spin that the Democrats are already putting on what's going to be a massive loss, it's a day that, well, Joe Rogan said there's going to be a really big red wave. The red wave that's coming is going to be like the elevator doors opening up in The Shining. (laughs) If you're Hannah's age, you don't get that reference. If you're anyone else's age, you know, in The Shining, the little boy was looking at the elevators and it was just blood just like all over and they're screaming and yelling and that's the red wave that joe rogan is predicting is going to come on to you not just him pretty much everybody at this point is predicting a red wave come tuesday so that's the eighth and then the ninth is wednesday 10th is thursday 11th is friday and then 12 13 so 14th would be monday be a week from monday that people believe donald trump will be announcing his run for president now it's interesting timing for a couple of reasons first of all we all know that nobody no but but like nobody democrat or republican is going to announce or was planning to announce before election day it just doesn't make sense Politically, you need to know where the landscape is before you announce. Also, politically, you need to make sure your team wins the game and that you're not throwing out, you know, uh, you're throwing out information there that might skew it one way or another. What I mean by that is had Donald Trump come out early and said, you know what, I'm going to run for president after the midterms, a lot of people might have been like, whoa. I'm not giving Donald Trump all these crazy MAGA Republicans in the House and the Senate if he's planning to run for president again. It could have definitely shifted some of the races. That's the way some people think. Unfortunately, that's the way some people vote. But by waiting until after the red wave, by waiting until after the MAGA Republicans that Donald Trump supported publicly are swept into office by an angry electorate who's who's sick and tired of paying for high gas prices, sick and tired of paying for high prices at the uh, at the uh, grocery store, sick and tired of hearing, oh, abortion, uh, infrastructure, COVID. 
They don't care about any of those things. They care about the things that they care about, and the Democrats don't care about any of them. That's why this is all happening. So you wait until afterward, and then if you're Donald Trump and you look around and you see he, you say, hey, Carrie Lake over there in Arizona, I endorsed her. She's now the governor. Oh, look, Dr. Oz over there in Pennsylvania, J.D. Vance in Ohio. Check this out. Marco Rubio down in Florida. Ron DeSantis, I basically made that guy who he is today. You've got all these people walking around. Donald Trump's looking at them going, these winners are ultra MAGA Republicans. These are my allies. These are people that think and talk and act and believe like I do. And my base is their base. My supporters are their supporters. That's when you're going to look around and say, okay, that red wave, yeah, now's the time to announce. And you don't want to wait too long because the longer you wait, the, or the easier it's going to be for the DOJ and Merrick Garland and Joe Biden and the FBI to serve you with some kind of papers to prosecute, prosecute you to finally file that indictment and drag your butt into court. But if you are a declared candidate for president, if you are the, the front runner to the opposition party that is currently in the White House, well, then politically and legally, it becomes a whole different battle. If Donald Trump on the Monday after Election Day announces that he's running for president, all of a sudden, he's not just a former president uh, that the FBI is looking into. He's not just a former president that the DOJ wants to indict. He's now the person who could be the next president of the United States being attacked and investigated by the president of the United States, his number one political adversary. And that, folks, is a whole different ballgame. And we'll get to that here in just a minute. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. But very important news. It's Friday! Yeah. And I'll tell you what, man. I woke up this morning and there was this big, huge gift from the Republican Party. I knew that they were going to do something like this. I didn't know that they were going to do it today, but man, I'm glad they did. I knew that they were making preparations to start investigating Hunter Biden and Joe Biden and the laptop and the DOJ and the F Biden I. I knew that they were going to do whatever they could. We talked about it just days ago. Days ago. Congressman Mike Waltz walked, walked on in here, sat down and said, we've got to have accountability. Three weeks ago, Kat Kamek, representative, congresswoman from Florida's 3rd District, came in here, sat down and said, we've got to go ahead and impeach Mayorkas. We've got to make sure that Joe Biden knows he can't use the Department of Justice and the Department of Homeland Security and the military and the IRS and the, and the DOJ and all these, and what are the CDC? They're not just his personal foot soldiers. They're there to represent and help and protect the people of the United States of America. And so when I woke up this morning, I was so excited to see this great big fat 1000 page report from the congressional republican caucus yeah that's right 1000 pages which i have right here look at that look at this is oh oh god my god this is 1050 pages that i printed out this morning fyi we're gonna need more toner 1050 pages printed on our copier Every single one of them itemizes some kind of corruption, some kind of criminal behavior, some kind of biased partisan attack by the Department of Justice, by the FBI, by Joe Biden against Republicans and their former president, Donald Trump. The FBI whistleblowers, it's called, what their disclosure indicates about the politicization of the FBI and the Justice Department. 1,050 pages signed by Republicans, documented by Republicans, whistleblower reports. This is it. This is the groundwork. This is the roadmap. This is what Republicans will begin working on on day one after they win back the House of Representatives, after they win back the Senate, and after we begin our journey to take back America. It's all happening on the 8th. The red wave that's coming is going to be like the elevator doors opening up in The Shining. <laughs> and are those people with the big D's next to their name going to get flooded? Oh, they're going to be drowning. There's going to be red waves just... And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we're going to wake up in a country that we recognize once again. I'm telling you, it will very, very probably happen. I will very, very, very probably do it again, okay? Very, very, very probably. 855 mark is our number, 855 Listen, I'm not going to lie. This thing, I, uh, I, you know, I, we, oh, God, it's very heavy. 
Yeah. I, I don't go to the gym that much or ever. You can use that as weights. This really, I could like, you know, I, I was doing the military press earlier, you know, like this. Yeah. I mean, I could build up some solid shoulder muscles. This is 1,050 <laughs> pages. I printed every one of them. Uh, there's an executive summary. There's all kinds of whistleblower reports. And the reason they released this today is because, you know, this election on Tuesday has been hyped. I believe overhyped in some ways. And I think that a lot of people are maybe, you know, they're they're not just optimistic, but they're a little cockily optimistic. Is cockily a word? I think you made it one. All right, cockily optimistic. And we want to make sure that Republicans still go out and vote. There's still, uh, you know, what, four more days. And we've got to make sure that all of these races that they're already calling, that we already believe we're going to win, we need to win. And I think what Jim Jordan and the Republicans did, Republican Staff Report, Committee of the, on the Judiciary, U.S. House Republicans, November 4th, 2022. I think the reason they did it today was because they wanted to really get people going and say, we've got a plan. We've got 1,050 pages worth of a plan to go after Joe Biden's personal stormtroopers, to go after the FBI, the people that are investigating the former president for ridiculous crimes and ignoring the current president's son's a son for actual crimes. We've got to make sure this politicization ends. So let me just read you the first uh, page of this 1,050. Should I read all 1,050 pages? Absolutely not. Probably not, yeah. Oh, fun fact, by the way, as I was printing this out, if you go to my Instagram, you can see the whole story. I spent a, a like a large portion of the pre-show in the copy room <laughs> because, you know, this is your several reams of paper. Yeah. Uh, but what happened was I, I hit print and I went in there and I took my computer and I realized it was going to be a while. So I was taking the stuff off the printer and it was all going fine. And then I started posting on Instagram. Yeah. And right after I publicized the uh, FBI whistleblower report that I was printing out and how yeah. I was going to share it on the air, literally within seconds of publicizing that, printer jammed. Ooh. Not just once, repeatedly. Look, my goodness. Look at this. See, here's I saved, I salvaged a couple of pieces of paper from the jam, mostly the signature pages. But I thought to myself, what are the odds that I put on Instagram? I'm I'm currently publishing or uh, printing out this massive document about about uh, you know what you, the uh, the politicization of the FBI and all this corruption going on in the DOJ. And all of a sudden, the printer jams? Wild. I didn't even know the FBI had access to our printer, but it makes <laughs> sense. Uh, here's the first page of the executive summary. The Federal Bureau of Investigation under the stewardship of Director Christopher Wray and Attorney General Merrick Garland is broken. The problem lies not with the majority of frontline agents who serve our country, but with the FBI's politicized bureaucracy. The problem lies, for example, with the FBI hierarchy that spied on President Trump's campaign and ridiculed conservative Americans. The problem lies with FBI bureaucrats who altered and mischaracterized evidence to federal courts, circumvented safeguards and exploited weaknesses in policies governing investigations and informants to target politically disfavored subjects and to protect favored ones. Uh, you, can, is, you can substitute politi uh, politically disfavored subjects to Donald Trump and to protect favored ones to Hunter Biden. The problem lies with the FBI structure that centralizes high-profile cases in D.C. in the hands of politicized actors with politicized incentives. Quite simply, the problem, the rot within the FBI, festers in and proceeds from Washington. What that means is that the FBI, even when it's questioned and even when there are lawsuits and even when there are investigations, it does no good because all of them are done where the FBI is based. And that is in Washington, D.C. And we know that the entire Washington, D.C. governor complex, uh, government complex on both sides of the aisle is compromised in a system that protects its own. So it, it appears that Jim Jordan and the congressional Republicans, when they get back control, when they wrestle back control, well, really, when we hand it to them uh, next week on November the 8th, their plan is to go after Merrick Garland, go after Christopher Wray, go after the corrupt bureaucracy of the FBI, and go after the other bad actors in D.C. who are letting them get away with all of it. I will read this over the weekend <laughs> and bring you a full summary uh, come Monday. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Incidentally, it is Friday, which means Fake News Friday coming up here in just a minute. Week in review trivia, your phone calls, your open mic messages. We've got some great news about some of these races coming up here in just a minute and more of the Mark K Show. So don't stay right where you are, folks. We will be right back. Ba -ba -ba -da 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 -da. Bum, bum, Yo. Bum, bum. Yo, yes. yo, yo. 
Uh, April says you probably shouldn't let Mark lift that, Hannah. He might injure something. Right? Thank you, April. <laughs> Hannah, so, you should be lifting, doing all the heavy lifting. I'm on so this show. sorry. Hey, real quick. Yeah. Um, other than Scribd, because you have to like pay for that. What? Um, where can you find those thousand fifty pages? Because I found it in the New York Post, but it, again, it was for with Scribd. I mean, I have them right here. No, not just you. Other people want it. Oh, I have a PDF. Okay. Where do you get the PDF? I mean, I got it from the well, Fox News website. I got it from Scribd. Oh, so you have a but membership just, to Scribd? You don't map, you don't pay for it. Don't you, don't you just pay? Don't you just log in? It says read free for thirty days. Yeah, well, so read free for thirty days. Okay. I mean, I, I uh, can I upload a file? I don't think I can upload. I don't the know, file. but I sent. If anyone wants it on Rumble, um, I just posted the link. And then I will post it on What we'll do is uh, Facebook as well. Starting after the show today at 3 o'clock, we'll just have uh, Jay live stream while he reads the entire thing. Yeah, yeah, through. yeah. 100%. He'll yeah. read everything. Right. <laughs> In his Jay voice. Uh, Laura, I did post it on Facebook. It is right above your comment. Yo, Hannah. Brandon is here today. What up, Brandon? You are welcome, Florida Renegade. Can I pin this for anyone that wants to pin? You can do whatever you want. Great. You're the executive producer. You Great. run this. <laughs> oh, good to know, Michael. Thank you. Isn't reading copy in show prep and organization the executive producer job. Um, yeah, if Mark didn't love to be in control, yes. Um, I'm sorry. If you weren't all, like, gone out of the studio for, like, three hours. What are you talking about? I was I doing prize packs. Well, there you go. So you were I was doing my job. No, I need to know the information myself. Yes. Also, me, I wanted to do the Instagrams. Also, if someone walked in and saw Hannah printing out a 1,000 pages, they would have said something. But with me, they just walked by because no one wants to talk to me. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Do you need me to carry that out to your car for you later? <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> How many trees do I need to chop up to print that? <laughs> uh, what was I looking for? Oh, Instagram. All right. What do you mean, April? Thanks for the reading later, Jay. Jay Monty, check your spam. Uh, let's get back to work. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. See, I'm... Anymore. Struck. Joe Raylick says you need a pallet jack, Mark. Hmm. We have one, I think, in the other room. Uh, oh. What? April, I think you are mistaken. Who's the new girl? <laughs> what does that mean? Who said that? Jim. What's line one? joke oh is it about me and if so is it appropriate probably and probably not yes and maybe oh great <laughs> my favorite <laughs> i mean maybe and yes oh okay good 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 <laughs> This is the Mark.
Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855 mark is our number. 855-940-6275. And it's true, by the way. That was a direct quote from Joe Rogan on his podcast the other day. The red wave that's coming is going to be like the elevator doors opening up in The Shining. <laughs> I mean, that's the same guy that told everybody to vote Republican because he, too, is sick and tired of the corruption and of the greed and of the lack of leadership and the ineptitude that's coming from the Democrat Party. I don't know. I forget the name of the woman he's talking to, some comedian. And she also said, look, she's seeing it in her own in her own family. They're making Republicans. I don't know how they're doing it. By the way, that's, that's a great. They're making Republicans. They're just printing Republicans now, the Democrats. Like, they're the Democrat part, the DNC, the Joe Biden's White House, it's become just a big Republican factory. They're making Republicans. I don't know how they're doing it. It's I had a family member who is an, who's a boomer and a diehard liberal, and they told me when I was home this summer that they would vote for DeSantis. And I'm like, how did you lose this person? Yeah. How did you lose this person? This is a This is a, like, go to the ballot and vote blue no matter what. And you've lost even the the boomers. And that's true. That's happening all over the country. It's people that are that have voted Democrat their entire lives, whether they're baby boomers, whether they're blue collar workers, whether they're uh, you know uh, African Americans, whether they're Latinos, uh, could be anybody that is a typical um, you know a reliable Democrat voter. And they are fleeing the party because they don't want to be associated with, uh, you know, uh, abortion. They don't want to be associated with this gender ridiculousness. They don't want to be associated with open borders and the crime. And they don't want people out there telling them they've still got to stay home because of COVID. They've still got to wear masks. Uh, they they won't be able to afford their gas. And the cure to inflation is buying cheaper raisin bran. The boomers especially, man, they need the good quality bran. The older you get, the more important bran is. <laughs> and you can't, trust me, I know i got a lot of old people in my life. And they need... <laughs> They need the high-quality brand. They need all the dietary fiber. Joe Biden telling them, buy the cheap brand. Oh, hell no. I'm voting Republican. Oh, hell no. You just lost me. 855-940-MARK is our number. Listen, there's a little bit more in this FBI report I want to get to, plus new details about the night Paul Pelosi was attacked just one week ago. We'll have info from the cops in San Francisco right after this. Bridget Fetessy. Bridget Fetessy, what about her? That was that was the girl. Oh, on the podcast. Who is she? Uh, she's a writer. Writer, okay. Got yeah. Do you imagine writing one thousand fifty pages? No, I, I was know not one person did it, but still. No, but regardless, like <laughs> I remember, I wrote seventy four pages for my final paper, and I was like, "This is the worst thing." I've ever done 74 pages. Yeah, it was horrible. Mm. I was like, you know what? Maybe I don't need to graduate. <laughs> it's yeah. Fine. I mean, looking back, you, 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 have we ever once asked to see your diploma? I actually don't think we have. Mm. Mm. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Oh, ETC says, oh, I like her. She's funny. She's on Rumble, I believe. Oh, good. Oh, cool. Yay. What did, did you send me the real news? I did yesterday. To, Do you want me to resend it? Where did you send it to? I believe I sent it to both places because that's just my, my feel safe. Is your name Hannah? That's me. Just type in real news because that's what I sent it as. Real well. news. Thursday yeah. at 334, 1143. 11, yeah. Victoria Abs. Live from Chile, Minnesota. It's 39 degrees at 1130. Ooh, that sounds fun. Hi. Is it snowing? Let's check the weather. Let's check the weather. Hmm. Well, currently, right now, here, it's 77 degrees. And the feels like temperature is also 77 degrees. Let's see if there's any cold days coming up. Probably. Um, next Wednesday, it's going to be 73. Ooh. Ooh okay, that's so cold. Not this upcoming Sunday, but the, <laughs> the Sunday after. It'll be 68. Ooh. <laughs> Chile, Chile. <laughs> Kelly Johnson says, no snow, and I'm at 37 degrees. Joe Raylick wants to borrow your bullhorn. Uh, what for? I don't know. All right. What uh, is it for, Jay? I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe he's going to a Biden rally. That's what I was thinking. 
Colleen says, four inches of snow here yesterday. Beautiful sunrise today. Everything glittered. Oh, yeah, that is so pretty. You know when it's, like, really cold in the morning and it's, like, formed an ice over the snow mm -hmm. and it's super glittery? Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> what? This is great. Brenna said, it snowed here good. Oh, yeah? In Colorado? Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. Sorry, in Washington, we said it Colorado. How do you say Nevada? Nevada. Okay. Ew, not Nevada. Is it ne ne yeah. Nevada? Uh, it's Nevada. Nevada. No, that's what I just said. Mm -hmm. I said I was trying to say the, the bad way that people say it. The bad way would be not Nevada. Right. It would be Nevada. That's what it is. Um, I don't like when people say Oregon as Oregon. I These hate are great. That. These are great. The fake right. ones? The yeah, ice. Um, yeah, yeah. When I lived in uh, Northern California, it was uh, Petaluma and Novato. Novato? Mm hmm. Demi Novato? Demi Novato. Oh, okay. It was named after her. Yeah. We actually went to a, uh, what was the name of that town? Atlanta. <laughs> uh, Birmingham. Close. Uh, New York. Marietta. Reno. <laughs> Close. You're getting closer. <laughs> um, Salt Lake City. Billings. Montana. Um, Duluth. Almost. Uh, Nicasio. Oh, that's Dothan. the one. Nicasio. Oh. Yeah. That, uh, I believe that is where they filmed the uh, Village of the Damned. Mm. And it is tiny. Tiny village. There's like one, village one square in the middle of town. And that's where the grocery store is, mm. the post office, the bar slash restaurant oh. slash live event slash wedding. Guys, breaking venue. news. Uh oh. Tiffany Cross got fired from MSNBC. Oh. <gasps> Ooh. No way. Way. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. That's amazing. I wonder if Poop Toilet is next. <laughs> Joy Reid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They also got rid of Shepard Smith. Okay. Oh, and Brenna corrected me. It's Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. What did you say? I'm still going to stick with Colorado. 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 Yeah, Colorado. Okay. <clears throat> head for the mountains. Head for bush beer. Isn't that Colorado? No, that's... Uh, I don't... Yeah, okay. you don't know. I don't know. Bush Country beer. road. Take me home. West Virginia. Oh, that's West Virginia, right? What was I thinking? He had a song about Colorado. Did you like didn't that? He? Yeah. I knew that one right away. Didn't he have a song about Colorado too? Who, Bob Seeger? No, John Denver. <laughs> Willie Nelson. Oh, maybe because his last name is Denver. I always think of Colorado. That's what it is. I think that's what it is. I thought you were talking about the Silver Bullet Band. <laughs> oh. My friend was telling me that he Turn saw Willie Nelson's uh, son perform, and that while Willie Nelson is great, his son is trash. Mm. I was That's, like, oh, yikes. good to know. <clears throat> My mother, don't let your babies grow up to be trashy. <laughs> <laughs> We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. By the way, by the way, breaking news, Hannah. Yes. What do Shepard Smith and Tiffany Cross and 3,000 Twitter employees all have in common? What? They're all out of a job today. Boom. 
Yeah. Very funny. Emma, Tiffany Cross, by the way, she's the, uh, I thought she was like the second worst racist at MSNBC, but apparently she was the worst one. Now she's not even there anymore at all. Uh, they canned her. They axed her. They got rid of her show. She's the one that would always fill in for Joy, the poop toilet is full, Reed. The poop toilet is full. And Shepard Smith, you may remember, was the lone lib at Fox News for some time before he just had enough, packed up his stuff and left uh, for MSNBC, which were greener, um, more liberal pastors. Apparently they've had enough of him too. He's out. So MSNBC seems to be doing a little CNN-ish cleaning of the house. Uh, CNN, by the way, waking up to move Jake Tapper out of primetime after an abysmal uh, after an abysmal experiment that will not see him surviving his primetime broadcast post midterm elections. He'll be resigned back to whatever it is sometime in the middle of the afternoon. And Don Lemon, who <laughs> they moved to the morning drive show as a way to not have to fire him and be sued, uh, had probably I think the worst ratings in the network's history for their Yikes. morning news show. That's rough. It's rough and also fantastic news. 855-940-MARK <laughs> is our number. 855-940-SIGMA. We'll have more on that. We'll have more on the Twitter situation coming up here uh, in just a minute. But I did want to get back to this FBI thing very quickly because there are some important things. The executive summary is really the important thing. It's a four-page executive summary. And then what happens is you can go through and, and uh, I guess, you know, each of the – you know, one person didn't just sit down and crank out 10,000 or 1,050 pages. I don't believe so. Um, but they all cumulatively had their parts, and they all interviewed whistleblowers, and they brought it all together, and they published it. But he, there's a couple of highlights here, and they've actually bold-faced the words in this report. And it continues, this report details the problems as recounted in whistleblower disclosures and other forms that undermine the FBI's fundamental law enforcement mission. Whistleblowers described the FBI's Washington hierarchy as, quote, rotted at its core, end quote, maintaining a, quote, systemic culture of unaccountability, end quote, and full of, quote, rampant corruption, manipulation, and abuse. Whistleblowers describe how the FBI has abused its law enforcement authorities for political purposes and how actions by FBI leadership show a political bias against conservatives. Now, this is the part in the program where the conspiracy theories that we used to tout on Conspiracy Theory Thursday six months ago now just are proven to be factual. This is why sometimes we call them conspiracy theories and other times we call them spoiler alerts because really today's conspiracy theory is, is next year's headline news, a la the Hunter Biden laptop story. Listen to all of these bullet points that they will be investigating after the midterm elections, that Jim Jordan and the Judiciary Committee will be investigating after the midterm elections, and see if any of them sound familiar. The FBI is artificially inflating statistics about domestic violence and extremism in the nation. Now, that's something that a lot of people had said earlier, that extremism is not the number one problem facing America. White supremacy is not the number one uh, problem facing anyone in this country. There is not an outbreak of violent Republican Donald Trump love and ultra mega extremists in the country. Yet Joe Biden continues to to parrot that exact line, not only uh, the other day at Union Station, but a couple months back when he was standing in front of, um, you know, uh, Independence Hall in Pennsylvania. Number two, the FBI is abusing its counterterrorism authorities to investigate parents who spoke at school board meetings. Do you remember way back when the FBI was sending at the at the direction of Merrick Garland all of these agents around these school board meetings and everyone was crying foul saying they're there to intimidate the parents. They're there to keep parents from speaking out about mask mandates and CRT. And what do we hear from the establishment and the media? That's just that's just a crazy conspiracy theory. Well, turns out it's not. The whistleblower report has all the information right there. Number three, the FBI has abused its foreign intelligence authorities to spy on American citizens, including people associated with the campaign of President Trump in 2016. This is all stuff we heard was just made up. It was Donald Trump was spying on Hillary. Donald Trump was asking Vladimir Putin to find those emails. Donald Trump was colluding with Russia. We, no one would be surprised if Donald Trump was bugging the offices of, uh, of uh, Hillary Clinton for president and the DNC. Well, wouldn't you know it? Turns out, once again, it was totally the opposite. It was the FBI who was spying on all of them. Uh, the FBI is clearing the Bureau of Employees who dissent from its woke leftist agenda, which means 
and this is this is not surprising at all and this is something that definitely needs to be addressed you can't have a co corrupt left-leaning organization if you have people that believe otherwise inside the organization. You can't have Republicans. You can't have Trump supporters. You can't have conservatives. You can't have people who actually want to protect the Constitution of the United States in an organization that is hell-bent from the top down to destroying the protections of the Constitution of the United States. So they've been trying to weed them out, and that's what the whistleblowers blow, blow, uh, are now telling us. Whistleblowers have explained how the FBI's political meddling is dragging the criminal side of the bureau down as resources are pulled away from real law enforcement duties. This is important. Not only is Joe Biden using the FBI and the DOJ for his own political maneuvering, not only is he using these agents to investigate his political rivals, but in doing so, he's taking away valuable assets and agencies and law enforcement personnel and experts and, and equipment and, and time, which is the most valuable of all resources, away from actual crimes. So not only is Joe Biden manipulating these organizations, and not only are the Democrats, according to this report, manipulating these organizations, but they're making the country even less safe because now these agents aren't doing the thing that they're supposed to be doing. Let me read you an example of this. One whistleblower described how he was told that child sexual abuse material investigations were no longer an FBI priority. Those should be referred to local law enforcement agencies so that he could uh, work a wash, so that he could work a Washington-directed politically charged case instead, in, uh, instead. Such a misprioritization is not only a dereliction of duty, but it is a grave disservice to the victims of crimes that do not advance the FBI's political agenda. So if you don't have, uh, you know, classified or non-classified or unclassified documents at Mar-a-Lago, the FBI is not going to investigate your crime. If you've got other crimes that the FBI at one point in their time took care of, now the bureaucrats at the top of the uh, top of the J. Edgar Hoover building are saying, you know what, we're not really interested in that. Where the Hunter Biden crime, where Joe Biden potentially could be implicated in a in a uh, international scheme to sell direct access to the Obama White House. And, uh, you know, and this this quid pro quo that he had with Ukraine where he uh, forced them to fire a prosecutor so that his son would stay out of jail and used a billion dollars of our tax dollars to do it. We're not going to investigate any of that stuff because that doesn't that doesn't behoove us. Well, uh, as Michael Scott would say, oh, how the turntables. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855 855- Nine. We need to get that on the hotkeys, especially in Michael Scott's voice. Yeah, yeah. we need to get that that clip on the hotkeys because especially after November the 8th. Oh, absolutely. I mean, everything's going to be, oh, how my, how the turntables. <laughs> and we'll get busy looking for that here uh, in just a minute. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Now, the interesting thing um, about what's going on uh, with the red wave is that you've got every high profile, high powered democrat who's really held any kind of position of power in the last say 20 years you've got them out now stumping and campaigning and trying to stop the the blood from coming through the elevator the red wave that's coming is going to be like the elevator doors opening up in the shining <laughs> they are out there they've got paper towels they've got mobs they're trying to stop this red they're trying to damn it up man and they're doing a damn poor job of it and one of them is hillary clinton who it jumped on the Paul Pelosi attack, which, by the way, we have some very eye-opening new information about the Paul Pelosi attack coming up. Uh, but she jumped on this whole Paul Pelosi attack to get back out there, to reinvigorate her, you know, Hillary Clinton-ness, to make, to make people feel bad on the news. She, she got on the uh, CNN hotline. Don Lemon put her on in the morning, which is great because apparently no one was watching his show. And she started to talk not just about what happened with Paul Pelosi and this extremism, but she pointed to one... Uh, candidate in particular you know obviously it's it's a horrifying incident but it, it is also sadly a a real indicator of where we are in our country right now that you would have uh, people on the republican ticket like the woman running in arizona laughing about an attack on anyone let alone an 82 year old man whose wife happens to be 
uh, second in line to the presidency. Now, there's a lot of fallacy. First of all, it's Carrie Lake. She's the woman running in Arizona is named Carrie Lake, and she's not just running. She's, she's I mean, she's dominating the race, and the odds are that she'll be the next governor of Arizona. Hillary Clinton just has nothing but contempt for her because she was, quote, laughing at the Paul Pelosi attack. That's not true. Carrie Lake did not laugh at the Paul Pelosi attack. Carrie Lake said this. It is not impossible to protect our kids at school. They act like it is. Nancy Pelosi, well, she's got protection when she's in D.C. Apparently her house doesn't have a lot of protection. <laughs> Carrie Lake didn't laugh. The people that were listening to her did. She said, she said if apparently Nancy Pelosi's house doesn't have protection, and I'll tell you what, uh, she would, that's a 100% accurate state of fact. But Hillary Clinton wants you to know that that, that line right there about uh, Hillary, about Paul Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi's house not having adequate security by that woman in Arizona, that vile, awful, Donald Trump-loving, uh, liberty-wanting, freedom-defending woman in Arizona who thinks the border should be, should be secure. Ugh! Gosh, she's awful. Uh, that's not it. She thinks she's not even fit to serve, and sh you shouldn't vote for her. Why would you give authority uh, to people who laugh at what happened to Paul Pelosi? We can have our differences over all kinds of policies, but when you really get to the human level, uh, my goodness, what, what kind of person is that, and why would we entrust any power to such a person? Now, I could sit here and go back through all... <laughs> All of the Hillary Clinton clips, all of the things she said about a basket full of deplorables, about lie detector tests for rape victims. We could, hell, we could go, we could just, we could just bring back the entire uh, transcript of the Monica Lewinsky uh, impeachment hearings for her husband, Bill Clinton, and see what kind of vile, lecherous creatures uh, they were. And they, you know, and they won elections. Well, Hillary didn't win her last one. Uh, but Carrie Lake, she was back on the, and she mentioned it. And she, I think she was on with Hannity last night on Fox News. And she did something, I'm going to tell you, that is very, very smart. When Hillary Clinton goes on a national television show, even if it's on CNN, and she says something like, that woman in Arizona is vile. Why, when she pinpoints you, almost calls you out by name, there's something very important that you should do. And Carrie Lake is smart enough to understand that. Here's what she told Sean Hannity yesterday. But I was a little concerned today, I'm going to be honest, when I saw Hillary Clinton bad-mouthing me and she looked she looked angry and actually scared and and uh just uh, completely unrelated i want you to know just in case you're wondering i'm in perfect health my brakes on my car are in good shape and i'm not suicidal and we're gonna win this thing on tuesday <laughs> and that's very important you need to make sure everybody knows that if you ever say anything negative about hillary clinton or more importantly if hillary clinton gets wind of it if hillary clinton ever says something about you if hillary clinton ever calls you out for something political you need to make sure that you find yourself a nationally televised program radio tv hell just put it on facebook whatever it is and you say just like carrie lake did almost verbatim you tell everybody that you're fine. Just uh, completely unrelated, I want you to know, just in case you're wondering, I'm in perfect health, my brakes on my car are in good shape, and I'm not suicidal. Okay, there you go. And that is the insurance policy that you need. That is all you need to lay down because these Clintons, I'm just saying, if you, know, if you Wikipedia it, you're going to find some very, very, very... Uh, interesting information. 855-940-MARK is our number. Speaking of interesting information, so it's been seven days exactly since the Paul Pelosi attack. It was last Friday on this very show where we, well, not we because one of us wasn't here, where I, and apparently she's taking another day off next week. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, my goodness. Uh, anyway, where Hannah wasn't here. I was here. Jay was here. You were here. And we were discussing this Paul Pelosi break-in. And the information we got on day one was very different from the information we got on day two, which was very different from the information we got on days three and four. And then by day five, it was totally different. And now Paul Pelosi is out of the hospital. And Paul Pelosi is at home. And now that he's at home and out of the hospital, I guess he's talking to people and people are then talking to other people and they tell a friend and so on and so on and so on. And so now we're getting after seven days, after one week, even more very crazy, wild information about what happened to Paul Pelosi last Friday at his home in San Francisco. And I have to be honest with you, 
it's even weirder than the information we got on day one just seven days ago. We have a clip from NBC News from the Today Show. We're going to play you exactly what they said verbatim because it is, it's wild. Also, fake news Fridays on the way. We've got some uh, a weekend review trivia on the way, and we have more information about this red wave that, oh, it's a coming. It's a good, grab those surfboards, uh, bo uh, boards, folks. We're going to be hanging 10 uh, next Tuesday. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Quick break. We will be right back. Yeah, yeah. I need like. Uh, what you need? Why are we getting another email from Rich Jones? I oh, know. this one he's sending to everybody. Oh, about Gina? Yeah. Is she gone now or is she? Uh, she must have. You just write back and say, bye, Fajina. <laughs> oh, my gosh, no. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Hmm. Sorry. What? No, I'm just, I'm trying, I need one more here. Okay. Do you want me to come up with one? Okay, that's fine. No, yeah, go ahead. Send me your best one. Okay. Can you say something mean? <laughs> No, what you do is you send me your best one, and then I ridicule it, and then you get really mad and send me some great ones. No, that's that's how it I works. I don't want that to happen. That's what happened last time. It makes me sad. When you you sent me the what was it the before and afters, and I go these are all. No, it wasn't before and afters. It was um. Mega match. Oh, it what? Oh, Mega match game. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. What, whatever it was. The first, yeah, it was Mega Match look, Game. The first go round, I feel like you were just, you know, phoning it in. But once I called you out on it, it took me so long. The anger like boiled up inside you. Man, it was. It was great. I don't like that. That's toxic. It's not it's not my fault. If you just did it right the first time, I wouldn't have to do that. <sighs> <laughs> we Wait, need I stairs. had a great oh here we go. Just breathe. Oh, I got a good one. So you don't want me to write one. People are being really loud and it's super distracting. Do you want me to poke excuses, my head? Excuses, excuses. Do you want me to poke my head on and be like, uh, can you guys keep it down out there, please? No. No? I mean, if you want to. I just thought it would be entertaining. That's fine. I bet you won't. I won't. <laughs> I can't. Um, I'm wanting to do like Did a Karen threaten our lives today? I didn't hear these yet. Oh, yeah, that's no. good now. No, nothing threatening? No. Mm. Darren is a broken record. It's not federal. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, That's perfect. What? what? The one, the it's not better woman. Yeah. Uh, she has uh, background noise going on. Oh, I know. It was for Darren. Oh, I see. Yeah. Conspiracy theory Thursday is a stupid, dumb segment I've ever seen. On Darren's show. No one wears oil hats and make cocks like conspiracies. That is the stupidest <laughs> thing I've. <laughs> I don't see how Darren has a job because the only thing he talks about for three hours is the same old <laughs> every day. Darren is a boring, broken record repeatedly every day. Time. Man, that's ironic. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know why viewers want to keep listening to him for three hours a day because Darren is okay. Darren is a broken record. The only thing he talked about for three hours a day was Biden. Okay, that's funny. 
Uh. I'm starting a new Karen tab. Are you really? <laughs> I don't know why I don't have one yet, but I'm starting one. Okay. Yikes. Sorry, that was loud. That was my bad. Was really Whiskey bad. said, who the F is Darren? Darren is me. Yeah. Uh, she's mad that I call her Karen. So instead of calling me Mr. Clean, which is much more insulting, she's already mm. calling me Darren. Yeah. Oh. Got three seconds. Two. Two. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Uh, I wanted to get to the Paul Pelosi thing, but I want to give it enough time. So we're going we're gonna to hold it till the next. Yeah, we're going to hold it till the next segment. But I do want to mention that there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of big politics going on this weekend. Uh, in fact, right at the end of our show, right around 3 o'clock, Governor Ron DeSantis, get this, is doing a rally at the Best Bet Poker Room in Orange Park. All the best people go to Best Bet. That is true. However, <laughs> it's not the same. We're doing, there's two Best Bets. There's three Best Bets actually okay. now in Jacksonville because um, that's how much we like to, <laughs> to gamble. But the uh, Best Bet in Orange Park, there's a huge, it used, formerly used to be a Greyhound track and now oh, it's cool. a big event space because, you know, Greyhounds no more. Uh, but so they're going to have a big rally there today and then he's just traveling all over the state just, just getting people all jazzed up uh, in the final push before Election Day. And of course, as we mentioned before, Donald Trump will be flying all over Latrobe, Pennsylvania, Miami, Florida. He was in Idaho yesterday. He's going to be a ton more places ramping up and pushing all of his contestants and candidates uh, over the finish line as well. However, when you talk about best bet, especially in this uh, day and age or this time of the year, we have to mention our Ho Ho Hold'em charity poker tournament, which is coming back on December the 1st of this year. And I have to tell you, we've been, it, it's so exciting for me to see the early, because again, I don't know why we ever waited so late. We've never read this organized. We never really got our stuff no. together, but it took us five years. We finally figured out we're going to promote it a lot earlier, get a lot more people there, have a lot more fun, make a lot more money, help a, a lot more kids. And so far, like I said, the, the response to the Ho Ho Hold'em charity poker tournament is incredible. Best Bet Monument Road in Jacksonville. Everybody's welcome. We were able to finagle you a, uh, a great rate at the Hampton Inn Regency and all the information can be found for that hotel at kskids.com and that's also where you get your tickets for the poker tournament where the grand prize is $1,000 cash. Open bar. Gourmet food buffet featuring homemade handmade uh, sushi roll. I'm really a fantastic time. Plus, you get to hang out with Jay, Hannah, and me, Mark K, as well as all the poker loving patriots uh, who choose to attend Thursday, December the 1st, Best Bet Jacksonville, the Ho Ho Hold'em Charity Poker Tournament for 2022. Get your tickets at kskids.com. That's K A Y E S K I D S.com. And I fully expect this thing to sell out before Thanksgiving. So don't dawdle. Call me. Oh, sorry. Wait, go look at what email we just got. We got an email from somebody? Be creative. It says fake news Friday. What? Well, no, I did send that, but. I didn't get a be creative. Email. Are you... They didn't even put you on it. Nope. Are you kidding me? Is it something in my be creative? Yeah. What's it, what's it say? Well, I can't. I don't think I'm supposed to enunciate. Is it the liquor thing? Yeah. Oh. But it says it's past due, and, like, we're not doing it. Oh, I've seen it. that's been in there. There were no copy points or anything. Yeah, there's there still co no copy points. Yeah. I mean, so. Oh, maybe they just now added me. That's probably. They added you. I wrote to them, remember? Oh, yeah. And I said, you need to add the girl. The girl. You know the girl. You know we, the girl. Uh, we're not doing Fake News Friday this segment. We are doing it this segment. I just have not yet solicited. So if you have someone who wants to play, you can line them up. Faux shiz. Faux shiz. I came up with one. How do you like it? <laughs> do you want to doctor it? I like it, but I'm going to fix it a little bit. Yeah, but I like please where doctor it. I like where you're going with it. Thank you. I had to get internally mad. I got it. I got No, <laughs> that's good. You know what? That was really good. I've got it. I fixed it already. Yay! I already okay, fixed it. Great. You know the girl, Heather, says Kelly. <laughs> That's right. 
Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh my gosh, for a second I thought those Hattie B's, it says fl flock on the front, but I thought it said um, feather, and I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Galen goes, what if Karen is actually a model and we would all fall in love with her like AOC? <laughs> This is great. Hannah, great job. Thanks. Home skillet. Okay. Now, the tag, I did a great job now. Why you don't like my nerdiness? Home skillet? Biscuit. Mm. Sitting on your biscuit. Never have to wear a biscuit. You. Oh, how the turn takes. Oh, Barb Frazier says JD Vance is coming to my town. That'll be fun. JD Vance, Vance Refrigeration. <laughs> Bob Vance. Hello. Hi. Michael Scott Paper Company to see Mr. David Wallace. I believe we're expected. Well, well, well. How the turntables. <laughs> so there was this auction um, at, at a school that my friend works at. It's a private school. And his parents got to bid on one of the things, and it was a forklift. Nobody else bid on this forklift. They won the forklift for $65. Like to keep or to use? No, to keep. Oh. Wow. $65 forklift. Yeah. Because hmm. they were trying to get this tractor, but the tractor uh, was over like $600, and they're like, you know what, we're tapping out, even though they're like $4,000. Yeah. But they're like, this is just like a, well, maybe. But they, like, just willy-nilly bit on this forklift, and they ended up getting it for $65. We had, because I always had to host the charity auction at my kid's school. Yeah. Um, so for years, I would do that. And every now and then, my wife wanted to bid on something. But one year, there was no auction because of COVID. So it was a silent online auction. And the one thing she wanted to bid on was there's only every year the eighth graders sign a picture of themselves of the eighth grade class. And they frame it, and they have, like, the tassel. It's like a graduation thing for the Cute. eighth grade. Yeah. So she wanted that for my son. And the year we did it, it was COVID, so nobody even really went on there. So we were, like, the only one that bid on it. We got it for, like, nothing. Then the next year, the auction was back, and it was my daughter's turn to graduate. And my wife's like, we have to get it because, uh, you know, we we have got we got it for Daniel. We can't diss Annabelle. Yeah. And so she found out one of her friends was also bidding on it for her daughter. And so she comes to me. She goes, we have to outbid them. I go, oh, don't you worry. We will take them out. Like, I'll be daddy big and bucks. Every time, like I just, I just put in, I just put in like my maximum bid so that every time they bid, they automatically got a bid. And I watched them, and they bowed out somewhere around like four hundred dollars. I was like, four hundred. You're like, like, they didn't even stand I, a I bet chance. more on Brian Stelter than that. <laughs> I did. How much did I bet on that guy? Like two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. I was like four hundred dollars. You obviously do not love your kid. You don't care that much no about that. <laughs> God. It was great. But like, here's the thing. You have no idea how much useless crap I have. Here, well, in the past, like before COVID, those things were going for like thousands of dollars, right? Because everybody wanted really? that. Oh, yeah. Uh, but what happened was the year before when we did, when there was no auction, it was online, we only paid like a hundred bucks. So for the two of them, we paid yeah. 500. So it was like 250 each. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Wow. I was like, I was like, you so you guys a, have both of them. So like, you brought a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah, we have both of them. You got, yeah. Like and a also, sword. <laughs> fun fact, since both my kids were also, this is where I brag, back-to-back -back valedictorians. Yes, we know. <laughs> they now have that thing hanging right next to the little plaque that says valedictorian. I love that. Was yeah. was Pam, like, really good at school? Or I mean, better than I was. Well, yeah, but she wasn't, like, all AP classes and things like that, was she? No, her dad's really smart. He was a scientist. Oh, really? Uh, he worked for the government. He was the keeper of the OM at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Wait, that's, like... Sounds really important. Yeah, it really. I mean, the keeper of the ohm. Yes, you know how like keeper you know how there's the standards ohm. and measurements like an inch or a quart or yeah. an ohm. Yeah, someone has to maintain that. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. So he was in charge of the ohm for like thirty. That's years. interesting. Is that like an appointed position, like like the Supreme Court justices, and then you just yeah. are that for life? I mean, it's government. Once you're there, you're there. <laughs> but when he retired, we got we were like uh, we got him a shirt, and it said ohm sweet ohm. <laughs> And I would go, hey, Pam's like, that's genius. I go, well, we'll get it. We got it, like, custom embroidered. We gave that it to him. That is beautiful. Yeah, he never wore it. Are you serious? Oh. He never saw him. Wait, that's so disappointing. <laughs> well, because I think he was, he didn't like being retired, right? So he's like, oh. he, he didn't want to bring back bad memories. 
He's like, it's fine. That's fine. I'm here. I was forced to. <laughs> Ohm sweet ohm. Mark has a personal story for nearly every occasion and topic. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. I, well, you know what it is. I'm just, uh, most of it's just BS. I'll be honest with you. I just make it up as I go along. Ohm, um, ohm on the grid. But also, it's kind of my job, so I have to, I have to, you know, it's like practicing. It's like that instead of going to the gym, like if you were a professional boxer, you'd go to the gym. I'm a professional talker, so I just try to get in a couple laps in between. <laughs> yeah. You know. 100%. Uh-oh. What happened to Rumble? Uh-oh. Um, oh, good. We're back. Okay. It was uh, locking up earlier. Yeah. Om, om on the range. <laughs> ba -da -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> that is right, Matthew Barrick. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855 mark is our number. 855-940-6275. We are so stoked that you decided to join us today. And if you're one of those people uh, that's been joining us every day, all week long, then we've got a game coming up a little later on for you. But right now, it's time for Fake News Friday. If you would like to play Fake News Friday, if you think you can accurately decipher between the real news headlines and the fake news headlines, and you hear about these Mark K Show prize packs all the time, and you're thinking, man, I would love to get a Mark K Show prize pack, then call now, 855 940 Mark is the number you need to dial 855-940. Mark, in the meantime, while we line up our contestants, there's new information, which I've now been teasing for about 30 minutes, so I'll stop teasing and I'll get it out there, about what happened with Paul Pelosi, with Paul Pelosi on the night that he was attacked, which was one week ago today. 2.30 in the morning, somebody broke into their, their home in San Francisco. No alarms went off. The cameras at the Capitol building were not being watched by the Capitol Police. Nobody knew until Paul Pelosi somehow convinced the attacker to let him take his cell phone into the bathroom and call 911 that there was ever any trouble. Then the police showed up, and we originally were told a mystery person, a third person, had opened the door. But now we're finding out, according to NBC's The Today Show, that is not the case. Listen to this. This morning, Paul Pelosi is home, back at the house that became a crime scene a week ago today. NBC News learning new details about the moments police arrived. Sources familiar with what unfolded in the Pelosi residence now revealing when officers responded to the high priority call, they were seemingly unaware they'd been called to the home of the Speaker of the House. Okay, now that's one question I have. Nancy Pelosi, she's not new to San Francisco. She's been there for a very long time. She is the Speaker of the House. She's been the Speaker of the House on and off for a very long time. How is it that the San Francisco police aren't familiar with the fact that the Speaker of the House lives in this particular House, how is it that in San Francisco you don't know that the woman who's second in line to the presidency lives in you know on your beat? That seems a little bit weird, but it gets weirder. Listen to this. After a knock and announce, the front door was opened by Mr. Pelosi. Whoa, wait a minute. What? The front door was opened by Mr. Pelosi? Paul Pelosi, who we thought was fearing for his life and was locked in a bathroom and calling 911, he unlocked the door himself, according to the new report. Paul Pelosi opened the door. Now I know what you're thinking. He's got this intruder in his house who smashed the glass and has a hammer and is yelling, where's Nancy? He gets the cops to come to the house. They open the door. What's the first thing he does? Run out the door and hide behind the cops? Scream and yell, help, help, it's an emergency, I'm under attack? No, he actually does the opposite. The 82-year-old did not immediately declare an emergency or try to leave his home, but instead began walking several feet back into the foyer toward the assailant. Okay, so this is bizarro. The, the, the police show up, you're being held hostage by a guy, and you, when the police get there, don't run out the door or hide behind them or yell or reach for their gun or do any of that stuff. You walk back in the house toward the assailant. That's an interesting, 
That's an interesting tactic. And away from police. It's unclear if the 82-year-old was already injured or what his mental state was, say sources. According to court documents, when the officer asked what was going on, defendant smiled and said everything's good. But instantaneously, a struggle ensued as police clearly saw David DePap strike Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer. After tackling the suspect, officers rushed to Mr. Pelosi Pelosi, who was lying in a pool of blood. All right, so if you thought once Paul Pelosi was released from the hospital, this thing was become going to become a whole lot clearer, you, like me, were mistaken. There's just a lot more questions now. 855-940-MARK is our number, 855-940-6275. And as the information comes out, we will be the first to share it with you. But first, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a little Fake News Friday. <laughs> this just in, it's Fake News Friday. <laughs> This is very exciting. Fake News Friday today uh, is just like, well, every other Fake News Friday. First, we get a couple contestants on the phone. Then we read them some headlines. They have to tell us if it's a real news headline or a fake news headline. If they get it right, they get a point. If they get it wrong, they don't. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. What, Hannah? Uh, a prize pack. What kind of prize pack? A Marquesho prize pack with the... all of Marquesho space everywhere. Yeah, all a bunch of swag with my head on it. 855-940-MARK is our number. Shall we meet our contestants? We shall. That's my favorite part of the game. Dawn is in Pitts, Pennsylvania. Or is that Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. Oh. Jay's, Jay's <laughs> going. I was like, there's a Pitts. Hey, Pitts. Wait, wait a minute. There's a Pitts and a Pittsburgh. That's odd. No, Jay's just giving me the shorthand today. Uh, Dawn, how are things in Pittsburgh? Oh, real sunny and nice. Oh. It's supposed to go up to 70. That's weird. I, I thought it was always right. sunny there. I thought it was always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. probably is. It I probably don't live is. there. All right. Uh, well, listen, Don, you're going to be playing against Aaron, who is in Atlanta. Is that Atlanta or is that short for something? <laughs> That is Atlanta. Atlanta, all right. Atlanta, hey, thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for checking in from the ATL, Aaron. All right, so here's what's going to happen. Like I said, back and forth, we give you the headline. All you have to do is tell us if it's real news or fake news. Do either of you have any questions before we begin? Not me. I'm good. All right, Ready good. Go. All right, anybody else? No, good. All right, here we no. go. Uh, Dawn, we're going to start with you today. Listen carefully and tell us if this is real news or fake news. All right. After AOC calls out Elon Musk on Twitter, Elon locks the radio in her Tesla on the Sean Hannity show. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fake. You think that's fake? It's fake news. Oh, oh, apparently, yeah. apparently he locked her out of her account for like a minute. He said it was just naked power. In her. That is uh, that is fake news, though. Nicely done. Bro, bro. You are fake news. I like Don. She doesn't even have to think. She's she just, doesn't. She's just smart like that. She's fake. She's like, fake. Nobody listens to Hannity. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally. That was a joke. Professional humor between, you yeah. know. Yeah. Camaraderie. Yeah, all right? that stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, Aaron, are you ready for your first one? Let's do it. Listen carefully. Here we go. Tell us if this is real news or fake news. John Fetterman. John Fetterman, speaking of Pittsburgh, tells the ladies on The View... He would definitely vote to codify row, row, row your boat. <laughs> wow, that sounds like something he would say. John Fetterman tells the ladies on The View he would definitely vote to codify row, row, row your boat. <laughs> Is that real news or fake news? Well, I missed, I missed it, but that, that sounds like something he would say. I'm going to go with real news. You're going to go with real news? Yeah. That is surprisingly fake news. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You are fake news. It definitely sounds... <laughs> definitely. That's a tough... But see, that's a tough one. That's where we are. Who knew that in 2022, on the brink of election day, we would actually believe that a candidate for Senate in Pennsylvania would say they would codify row, row, row your boat, and that would be believable. It's definitely... It's believable. Yeah, I know. I can't blame you at all. All right, Don, here we go. Back to you. Are you ready for your next one? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, listen carefully. Here we go. Simon Cowell announces a new reality competition show who wants to be Britain's next prime minister <laughs> um, that, that's fake news Simon Cowell announces new reality competition show who wants to be Britain's next prime minister you believe that is fake news mm, yes I believe so that is fake news 
Oh, that fake news. <laughs> no, nobody wants to be Britain's next prime minister. <laughs> said the job sucks. You only get it for 45 days, and then you got to go do something else. All right, Don, you got yourself, uh, you got yourself another point. Aaron, It's uh, you got to get on the board with this one, okay? Yeah, All right, a little bit behind. Yeah, no, you're doing – there's still plenty of time to catch up. I'm just saying, you know, now would be a good time. To, yeah, I get some points. Here we go. Listen carefully. Tell us if this next one is real news or fake news. Sarah McLaughlin ad says Jeez. Sorry, Sarah McLaughlin. That's all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to have to start over. Hannah's l- l- giggling I before I even I'm get sorry, done. sorry. Sarah McLaughlin's wild. That's not even the funny part. She is. <laughs> all right. There we go. Listen carefully. New Sarah McLaughlin ad says for only $8 per month, you can sponsor a celebrity's verified Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> I will remember you. What do you think, Aaron? That's fake. I think that's fake news. It is new Sarah McLaughlin ad says for only $8 per month, you can sponsor a celebrity's verified Twitter account. Do you think that's fake news? I believe it is. Yeah. Oh, that's That'd be fake so funny, news. <laughs> that would be great. We'll do it for this our next uh, fundraiser. We've got K's kids, and then we're going to have, like, blue checks. And we're going to be, like, sponsoring people's blue check marks. That's I a love good one. this. Uh, Aaron, congratulations. You got yourself a point. Don, back to you. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Oh, Rich. It's like, oh, I'm so ready. <laughs> Listen carefully, Don. Tell us if this next headline is real news or fake news. Here we go. Lottery winner keeps $30 million jackpot secret from his wife and child to keep them from getting lazy. <laughs> Lottery winner keeps $30 million jackpot secret from his wife and child to, quote, keep them from getting lazy. Is that real news or is that fake news? Uh, I think that might be real. You think that one might be real? Yeah, I think so. I think it's real That's smart. What my husband would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been all day? Oh, uh, nowhere. No, nowhere. Don't worry uh, about it. Chinese lottery winner keeps thirty million dollar jackpot for a secret from wife and child in an effort to keep them from quote getting complacent and lazy. Congratulations. <laughs> that is. Uh, that is uh, real news. Nicely done. You are just plowing through these. All right, Aaron, you ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Listen carefully and tell us if this one is real news or uh, if this is fake news. Firefighters suspended from duty for pronouncing a woman dead even though she was alive. Yikes. Firefighters suspended for uh, pronouncing a woman dead even though she was alive. Is that real news or is that fake news? I think that's real news. You think that's real news? I do. Denver, Colorado firefighters suspended for proclaiming a woman was dead even though they hadn't assessed her uh, serious uh, dereliction of duty and, and gross misconduct. Congratulations. Aaron, you got yourself. Uh, boy, that's a great side hustle, though. If you're like a doctor or something and people want to cash in on their life insurance policy. Just, just to like, you know, them dead. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> they gotta fight inflation somehow. You buy <laughs> just the, live off the grid. Buy the cheap raisin brand, defraud the insurance companies, whatever. All right, uh, Don, here we go. Here's your next one. Tell us if this one is real news or fake news, okay? Okay. All right, listen carefully. The Squad. You know who the Squad is, right? Yeah. No, I was asking Don. Oh. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hannah sometimes, Hannah sometimes forgets we're actually doing a radio Sorry, show. <laughs> she thinks everything's just a, a one-on-one conversation. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's take two. I'm so sorry. The squad says, quote, wearing white after Labor Day should be considered a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> the squad says, quote, wearing white after Labor Day should be considered a hate crime. Is that real news or is that fake news? That's something that they would say, but I'm going to have to go with false. Or fake. Or fake. I'm so- False news, <laughs> fake news, whatever. Faux news. Yeah, that's good. It saves a copyright infringement on Donald Trump if you say false news. Uh, that is false news. Nicely done. Oh, that fake news. Okay, Aaron, here we go. Are you ready? Let's go. Listen very carefully. Tell us if this is real news or fake news. Paul and Nancy Pelosi announced divorce amid fidelity rumors. Lawyers say the couple just needs to hammer out the details. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wow. 
Paul and Nancy Pelosi announced divorce amid fidelity rumors. Lawyers say the couple just needs to, quote, hammer out the details. Is that real news or is that fake news? That's amazing. I wish it was real news, but I think that's fake news. That is fake news. False news, whatever you call it. That is. Oh, that yeah, fake news. news. Which gives you a point, which brings you to three. Unfortunately, Aaron, uh, Don has four, which means congratulations, Don. You are our big winner today. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, here's Quincy to tell you what you won. Congratulations. Don. You've won a Mark K Show prize pack featuring a Mark K Show t-shirt. Some stickers. Probably a button. And whatever else Mark can stick his logo on. Yeah, by the way, th- uh, shout out to our good friends at the Babylon Bee for the uh, Sarah McLaughlin uh, headline. Go check them out. They need all the support they can get. Don, uh, and congratulations to you. Hang tight one second. We're going to hook you up, okay? All right. Thank uh, you. Oh, thank you so much for listening to the Mark K Show. Quick break, everybody. More right after this. I conveniently forget how to play games. That's very. What a good game, though. That was fun. Guys, Hannah wrote half of one of those headlines. Great job. Three quarters. Three quarters. <laughs> whoa, 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 and I, I gave you the new, the real ones. You did, yeah, and all the real ones. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, which uh? Wait, I, I have to ask. Did, oh, Mark. So in We Can Review Trivia, is the question that you replaced the trivia question? No. That's the standard. That's the one that's, that's the question. I know, but I was just wondering because it was a different. That's yeah. the question to end all questions. Okay. By the way, um, what, right before uh, or right at the start of this uh, segment, Love My Drones, Rumble rented you $100. What? And it says this is for a spectator giveaway ticket. I don't know what that means. I think a spectator, like, you know, like the spectator at the poker tournament. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, you should have bought a spectator. Okay, well, thank you. That's very sweet. Who did that? That was Love My Drones. Love My Drones. Oh, look, there it is. For a- Love My Drones. Bah! Bah! Thank you so much. All right, we'll take care of that. We'll take care of that. If anyone else wants to donate tickets, the best way to do it, we'll take care of it this time. The best way to do it is to go to the page, buy a ticket, and then let us know. Yeah. You can donate my ticket. This guy's throwing an egg at his girlfriend in the pool. That's awful. I would well, be she so thinks angry. it's a marshmallow. Love my drones. That's so crazy. That was Thank so crazy. You. Generous of you. <clears throat> Love my drones. Bye. How many drones do you have, by the way? Like, I don't, most oh, yeah. people have like one. If any. Yeah. I don't have any. I used to have one. What's cheap? <laughs> Wait. So when we were in Destin, we were all hanging out by the pool behind the Airbnb that we rented, but there was like a big fence, you know, around it. And there was this drone that was just like sitting over the top of our house. And this girl who was actually like really liberal, she goes, I'm done with this. I'm over it. Like nobody can hit this with a rock. Does anyone have a gun? And I was like, um, I do. Did you shoot the drone out of the sky? No, because as soon as the guy, because it was the next door neighbor. Oh. And I was like, I'll get it. Being creepy. (laughs) But I was like joking about it. But yeah, and he goes, I I was just shooting for work. I I wasn't filming. You can, you guys, you can check my film. Yeah. And this girl, Grace, was like, good. Because that girl would have shot it. (laughs) And I was like, I would not have shot it. But also, it was very creepy and don't do that. Was it Joe Francis? Was that the neighbor? No. Oh, okay. And you said he was doing it for work, so. Who's Joe Francis? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was super creepy. But then we didn't have to deal with the drone anymore. Oh, no, that's true. Mm-hmm. Jay Monty, you're going in for surgery? All of the, the, wait, did Love My Drones tell me how many drones I have? What do you do with your drones, by the way? Like, so many conspiracy, oh, wait. Um, we will be praying for you, Jay Monty. Love My Drones, what do you do with your drones? Do you do, like, like real estate videos and stuff? Uh... It's for 
work. Hmm. Dog whistling? What? <laughs> Who doesn't like whistling? Sissy cat. Oh. Ew. Even my whistling? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like people that hate whistling <laughs> still like my whistling. Monty. He says, I have a number of drones. Oh. I fly FPV. Oh. Got it. What is, what is, what is FPV? Is that the... Like with the goggles? Yeah, first yeah. person view. First person oh, view. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. So it looks like I want to do that. I've seen people that do. It. They like fly through the mountains and stuff, and they just it just looks like you're flying. Have you ever seen the people that uh, race them? Oh yeah, those things are crazy. Wait, what? <laughs> Racing drone. They go like sixty miles an hour. I'm like, how do they not smash yeah. those things? And they're like going over like rafters yeah. and things like that. It's amazing. Crazy. Um. Okay. So when you watched the the fall, yeah, or that's what it was called, fall. right? Fall. Fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did Fall. you also get like a pit in your stomach when the drone was like backing away from the tower? No. No? Oh, man. It like gave me a pit in my stomach. I was like, oh. Okay, so like, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because I've sky I went skydiving. I was fine. Mm -hmm. But not that. Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Thanks so much for joining us today, folks. We're so excited that you're here. We're so excited that you joined us. We hope you joined us all week long. And if you didn't, well, that's okay. Uh, we're glad for any of the time that we can get with you. And we want to make sure that all the time we spend with you is valuable so that you're entertained and you're informed. And there is a, another, you know, John Fetterman, he was on The View this morning. And uh, as I pointed out earlier, it was not the kind of, it was not a Ted Cruz kind of view interview where they were all just screaming and yelling questions at him at once where he had to bring in receipts where Whoopi Goldberg was uh you know pelting Ted Cruz with with just really m bad information and and things that didn't make sense uh but at the same time um John Fetterman because of his condition because he had a stroke uh because he has to read the questions through the teleprompter they treated him with kid gloves much nicer he got to sit in his nice cushy office in one of his favorite hoodies. He uh, got to read the questions on the teleprompter. It was one at a time. Questions came at him one at a time, and he did his best to answer them. And the answers were basically, you know, right in line with what we saw uh, at the debate. Now, in the light of in light of all of this, one of the questions that Joy Behar was thrilled to ask was about Oprah Winfrey, because Oprah Winfrey supposedly now has come out in favor at the last minute uh, in favor of John Fetterman. The uh, Politico writes, the longtime talk show host helped launch Dr. Oz's career on TV, which is true, but she's backing his opponent in the Pennsylvania Senate race. Now, this is really interesting for a couple of reasons. You may remember when Dr. Oz announced his candidacy, Oprah Winfrey was asked if she was going to support him. And she said, I'm not I'm not going to take a stand in this. Or I'm not going to get political. Well, lo and behold, that was back when, when Oprah Winfrey and everybody else thought Dr. Oz didn't have a snowball's chance in AG double hockey sticks. But now that he's got a one-point lead over John Fetterwoman, Oprah Winfrey is changing her tune and diving headfirst into the political arena. She, on Thursday, uh, threw her weight behind John Fetterman. Now, I don't know what Oprah's been doing lately, and I don't know politically if she has the same kind of clout she has when she, she backed Obama, but this could actually be better news for Dr. Oz. 855-940-MARK. More coming up. Yeah. You get an endorsement, and you get an endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, um... What was I doing? Bom, 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 bom. I don't know. Mm. Oh, guess where we're going? You and me? No, not you and me. Oh. Sorry, Casey and me. Oh, where are you guys going? So you're going camping somewhere. No. Georgia. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, well, yes. But no, for date night. Oh, where? Valley Smoke. I'm so excited. That's better than my living room, probably. Yeah, probs. Well, yeah, good job. They have good food there. Mm-hmm. Doop. <laughs> da what a renegade. Interesting. Um, 
Florida Renegade says, didn't see this coming. Mehmet Oz announces that uh, Maine Senator Susan Collins and Pennsylvania Rep. Brian Fitzpatrick will campaign with him Sunday in Bucks County. Susan Collins. Interesting, right? Interesting. Oh no! What ha- what happened with <laughs> what? Oh no! Sounds like a vape den. No, it's a it's like barbecue, fancy barbecue. What? What's wrong? Oh my god! What's wrong with you? I'm gonna have to read this. Did here. someone die? Close. Oh, um. By the way, Brenna wanted me to show this. It says the most beautiful didgeridoo player in the world, and it's apparently really oh ads. Hold on. What is that? Didgeridoo. The most beautiful didgeridoo player in the world. That's pretty sick. That's real cool. Brenna said that uh, her son was bobbing his head, and now he wants a didgeridoo. I love that. I think that's great. I got two of them. Mm-hmm. Mm. My cat is freaking out, says Sissy Cat. Sissy Cat not having a good day. First the whistling, now the didgeridoo. <laughs> He's never going to come back here again. Oh, wait, that song's stuck in my head. Uh... No, so what this guy did was he was on the diving board and his uh, girlfriend was in the pool and he had a bag of marshmallows and he would throw a marshmallow and she would catch it in her mouth. And he did that like four times and then he grabbed an egg, a raw <gasps> egg and threw it and it landed on her forehead and smashed. I'd be so mad. Oh. I think you can get over it. Yeah, you'd be fine. Hey, Siri, play Baby Shark Didgeridoo. You need to put Baby Shark on the bird list. Love My Drone says you need one of those, what is it, Twillier things like Crocodile Dundee had. Oh, yeah, you spin and it makes it... To uh, polish off your Australian instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, a big, and a knife. That's not That's... a knife. That's a knife. Thank you. I started to say that, and Mark just beat me to it. That's how, kill you know, what's notable to me is that Republicans say they're running on inflation and crime. Republicans have not presented any solutions to their voters on either of those topics. And that state's run by a Republican. So how are, how are those issues playing out there? And you know what's so interesting, too, is that are they playing out I have there? actually never heard a person who isn't an economist or works on CNBC. I used to do CNBC a lot as a guest. I actually used to do Larry Kudlow's show all the time, a couple times a week. And the only people I ever heard here use the word inflation are journalists um, and economists, right? So that is not part of the normal lexicon of the way people talk. So it's interesting that Republicans are doing something. I have actually never... That is wild. So interesting, too, is... That's great. Is that a joke? (laughs) No. Well, it's Joy Reid, so... Oh, well, <clears throat> Basically, yeah. yeah. You're welcome, Bonnie. And definitely you're welcome, Rachel. Liquor Giant says his next metal band is Didgeridath. Mm. Journalists um, and economists, right? So that is not part of the normal lexicon of the way people talk. So it's interesting that Republicans are doing something they don't normally do, right? Which is not use the, com- the common tongue, right? Not use just common English to sort of use do on their campaigns like they're doing with crime. But and you know what? Talk. So it's interesting that Republicans. 
you know, of the way people talk. So it's interesting that Republicans Lexicon of the way people talk. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're back in ten seconds. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are so excited that you're here. And I'll tell you what, every single day I get more and more people that are watching and connecting and writing and DMing via Twitter because Twitter is more and more friendly to people that are not just, you know, a tyrannical socialist one-sided liberals that don't want to hear anyone else's opinion. So, you know, it's a it's like a it's really finally now a place where all Americans, really all international folk who um, you know, who want to share ideas, uh, any ideas and not risk censorship or or their accounts getting shut down or anything like that. They can all they can all kind of congregate digitally. And today is a big day at Twitter because about half the staff is getting fired. And <laughs> And it's something that, as you might imagine, has caused a lot of problems. Uh, what happens is right now, in fact, I guess it's I guess it's happening right now. Um, 3,700, is that right? Let, let me get the actual. 7,500 staff members prepare for emails that came out at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So that would be noon. So right when our show was starting, they were mailing out emails to all of the employees. And each employee was said to be receiving an email. And the email, uh, the email subject line would be your role at Twitter. And then when they open the email, they would be able to see if they still had a role at Twitter or if they no longer had a role at Twitter. Now, there's a dead giveaway to this. If they received their email on their Twitter email account, they still had a role at Twitter. If they were locked out of their Twitter email account and they received the email on their personal account, that meant probably they would no longer be needed uh, at Elon Musk's company. Um, in the San Francisco building, a lot of people, it says, uh, according to the Daily Mail, are anxiously awaiting the email with the subject line, your role at Twitter, to drop into their inboxes. Staff in London and Manchester will receive the news by the same way, 4 p.m. local time, with many find them, finding themselves locked out of their accounts uh, already when they woke up. Members of staff have reported being logged out of their work accounts and locked out of laptops while the company sealed offices for all of its employees as Elon Musk began making his sweeping layoffs um, overnight. Elon Musk has described in an email that this is necessary to sustain Twitter as a company. I mean, this thing has been inflated beyond belief. The money, the spending, the lack of uh, transparency. There's been no, there's been no um, you know, economic plan for a long time. And that's why a lot of shareholders were shocked that Elon Musk was willing to pay so much for this company, um, not thinking that he'd ever be able to recoup his losses. And now that's what he's trying to do by selling blue check marks for $8 and laying off half of the staff. Uh, now, as you can imagine, in California and in New York, they're not really excited about that. And so they have taken to the, uh, the Twitter and the other social media networks, and they are fighting the layoffs with lawyers. Lawyers are coming forward, and they are saying, you know what we need to do is we need to sue. We need a class action lawsuit because you need to give people 60 days notice of a massive layoff in California. You need to give them 90 days of a massive layoff, uh, notice of a massive layoff in, in New York. So we really feel like we've got a case against Elon Musk. Even Fox News analyst Geraldo Rivera, who, gosh, everybody just loves that guy. Geraldo Rivera tweeted out this morning, bright and early, Elon Musk has declared all-out war on his former staff. At 9 a.m. Pacific time, massive layoffs go into effect at Twitter. With no formal notice and gut-wrenching efficiency, Musk and his inner circle have eliminated about half of its pre-Elon workforce, 3,700 Twitter jobs gone. He didn't stop there. He tweeted out a little later on. In response to the crushing sudden layoff of half the Twitter staff, employees have filed a massive class action lawsuit claiming Musk's draconian layoffs are in violation of California and federal law 
which prevent mass layoffs without 60 days notice. Now, as you could imagine, not a lot of people who have been crushed by Twitter's algorithms, who have been deplatformed or locked out of their accounts by Twitter, people who've had their tweets suppressed, shadow banned, or just removed altogether, people who still can't believe to this day that real Donald Trump was taken off the platform permanently, that Alex Jones was taken off the platform permanently, that Project Veritas, the Babylon Bee, Kaylee McEnany, all of these people have had run-ins with Twitter for freedom of speech, terms of service violations, and now... These folks are complaining that they're getting locked out of their accounts at Twitter. They're losing their jobs. They're getting laid off. As you can imagine, there's not a lot of sympathy except, well, maybe from Elon Musk. I have a prediction. I believe that Elon Musk is going to take this to the next level. Not only is he going to close down Twitter HQ in New York and, and uh, San Francisco and, and make sure that everybody's locked out of their accounts while he revamps who still has a role at Twitter, who's needed, who's unnecessary, who's going to be cut loose. I believe that eventually he will do, like all good business people do, he will move Twitter to a state that is friendly to capitalism – uh, a state like, oh, I don't know, Texas, where I believe Tesla is headquartered. Is that uh -huh. correct? I believe so, yes. Uh, SpaceX, which, you know, right down the road here in Florida, they shoot those rockets off all the time, and then they land them again, too, because that's more cost effective. Uh, there's a lot of different places around the country that would love to, in fact, the governor, I'm sorry, the uh, mayor of Miami and our governor, they've been trying to get all kinds of, of new investment and new industrial complexes built here in the state of Florida. Why? Well, you have a massive workforce. People are moving here left, right, and center. You have no income tax. The weather is, is uh, you know, very affable for year-round production or year-round working forces, plenty of real estate to go around, and it's just an all-around great place to live. Plus, we don't lock you down or force you to get a vaccine if you want to go see a football game. So all benefits. In fact, Secretary of State of the state of Florida, Cord Bird, was here the other day. He said that's a large port part of his job, meeting with Japanese investment firms, meeting with the Australian investment firms. Anybody who wants to come to Florida and leave their money behind, one of the things he does is he meets with them and explains to them the benefits of moving to a red state. And if Twitter gets purchased by Elon Musk and moves away from Silicon Valley, moves out of California, and moves to a red state, as I suspect it will, soon other companies will follow. Not because they are, not because they're anti-Gavin Newsom, not because they're anti-woke culture, just because they're capitalists. And they're going to start to see that if Elon Musk can trim half of his workforce and still run his company effectively, if he can move to a state that has a more friendly climate for a corporate culture where you don't have these laws that require 60 days before a mass layoff or your former employees can't sue you in mass because of something you did to make the company grow and prosper and be, well, you know, more cost effective. They, you know, where you will, uh, will have a better uh, deals on real estate, where you won't have tax burdens that are crushing, crushing for a lot of not just the higher ups, but also the employees. I mean, if you move out of California to Texas or Florida or Oklahoma or Nashville or any of these other places, the tax savings you get automatically is worth it. I mean, California, Phil Mickelson, I don't remember, he's a professional golfer. He got in trouble because he joked about moving out of California after he won something like a million dollars from a golf tournament and had to give 600000 of it to the government. He thought, why am I living here where 60% of my earnings go to the government? Then he's got to pay his agent and his manager, and, you know, I'm sure somebody else has taken a cut. And he's just like, it's ridiculous. I should move to Florida. He then had to walk it back because apparently he had some deal with the California Chamber of Commerce. So it doesn't matter. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's playing for the uh, Saudi Arabian League now anyway. Uh, but that's the way it's going to work. Twitter goes first, and then everyone else is going to follow. Because, look, the richest guy in the world didn't get to be the richest guy in the world by making rash decisions. The richest guy in the world didn't get to be the richest guy in the world by not knowing what the heck he's doing. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Speaking of people who don't know what they're doing, as we mentioned earlier in this program, the media continues to cut people left, right, and center, mostly left, 
Speaking about uh, folks like Don Lemon, who they moved, they didn't cut him. They moved him from primetime on CNN to the morning show where he has suffered abysmal ratings. Jake Tapper, who they moved to the primetime slot that uh, Don Lemon used to hold, at least through the midterms. But again, the ratings were really bad. So they're moving him back down to the afternoon. Tiffany Cross from MSNBC, easily, easily one of the most partisan and blatantly racist people on television, uh, followed, uh, you know, by a close second by Joy Reid. The poop toilet is full. And Joy Reid still, by uh, by the way, has a job. In fact, she was out. Listen to what she was saying about inflation. Joy Reid is out. I, I think she may have been in Florida. Um, and she was talking about the Republicans and inflation and how they're making inflation such a big deal. And the truth, the fact of the matter is nobody, nobody who's, you know, who's not an economist even really cares about inflation. And you know what's so interesting, too, is that I have actually never heard a person who isn't an economist or works on CNBC. I used to do CNBC a lot as a guest. I actually used to do Larry Kudlow's show all the time, a couple times a week. Yeah, and by the way, nobody cares about any of that. The only people I ever heard hear use the word inflation are journalists um, and economists, right? So that is not part of the normal lexicon of the way people talk. So it's interesting. No, that is not the normal lexicon of the way people talk. The only people that Joy Reid has ever heard use the word inflation are economists and the Republicans. It's interesting they start using the word inflation because that's not how normal people speak, meaning the average Republican is too stupid to know what inflation is. She must not have any friends. The average, well, not Republican ones. <laughs> the average Republican, you, me, your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, uh, you know, the cops, the military, all of it. Nobody really knows what inflation is. Remember, they're not economists. Just like uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson isn't a biologist, so she can't tell you what a woman is. Inflation, in Joy Reid's mind, is a word that the Republicans are hijacking and you and bringing into the mainstream at, to confuse their voters. They want you to think that inflation is this terrible, horrible, bad thing, but really it's just a term used by economists. It is. That's not a lie. But it's used by economists to describe a situation where uh, the cost of goods and services dra dramatically increase, causing massive economic chaos and an overall devaluation of everybody's personal wealth. So, yes, it is an economic, uh, economist term. But you know what? Abortion is also a medical term. Most people don't walk around talking about abortions every day. But when they're talking about abortion, I think they're smart enough to use the actual term. I think people have figured out what it means. I think people are, you know, if you're, if you're a Democrat and you're saying we need to codify Roe v. Wade, if you're a Democrat and you're saying abortion is health care, a woman should have the right to choose an abortion, abortion six weeks, 15 weeks, all the way up until birth. Abortion should be between a woman and her doctor. If you're using the word abortion, I'll be honest with you. I just, I've never heard anyone outside of a doctor or a medical professional use the term abortion. I think the Democrats are just using it to try to scare people to vote for them. 855-940-MARK is our number. I wonder when those MSNBC cutoffs are going to get around to the readout. I wonder. I mean, someone call MSNBC and let them know that the poop toilet's full. The poop toilet is full! 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Jay's going to send me a video later today of his son running around yelling the poop toilet is full. Because every time I play that, that's exactly what happens. Yep, he's going to do it. 855-940-MARK yeah. <laughs> is our number. Quick break, folks. More Mark K Show. More of your phone calls. And we have some open mics we got to get to. I've been remiss in doing that uh, here in just a minute. Stay tuned. We will be right back. No. Oh. Jeannie mm. goes, California used to be such a beautiful state. Who said that? Jeannie. Oh. Oof. Betty said some truth on Facebook. Betty says, Reed doesn't worry about the economy because she's rich. The rest of us feel what it means. Mm. That's truth. super accurate. Hmm. Top Georgia Democrat snubs Abrams and endorses Brian Kemp. Hmm. hmm. I mean, seems like a Kwanzaa move. Hall. Seems like a decent move. Can't uh, can't fault them that. Yeah. Where were these open mics? Uh, Do you need me to 
resend them? No, I got them. I'm, okay. I was more looking for them. Yeah. yeah. Talking out loud. And I live in Destin. Wish I could have run into. Vian, I didn't know you lived in Destin. Okay. Let me see if I have this. Ah, I'm sorry. I'll tell you what, though. It is beautiful there. Oh, With is. my birthday next week, all I want, all I will ask is that there is a red tsunami that. Kim says, I was born in San Diego and I used to love it there. But now I'm just so sad at what California has become. Yeah. To quote Jeremiah Wright, Biden's chickens are coming home to roost. Loving it. <laughs> hey, Mark K. I bought tickets, actually a table for your Mark K. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. Hold them. But I need to know if one of my peoples that I listed doesn't show up, if I can use an alternate. Great question. Mark K. GOTV is get out the boat. Are we going to mm. do uh, any parties? We are not oh. the United States of stupid. No. So I want. Okay. For Mark K., <laughs> here's a quote for you. I blame you then. Okay. Hi, Karen. After. Where was the red wave thing? They're making Republicans. No, they're not. Where did I, where did I put the red wave thing? Uh. For my birthday. I literally just had it. Oh, there it is. With my birth. We just got an email from Charlie, FYI. Charlie. The bourbon guy. What did he say? Uh, here's the letter I wrote for Mark in the brochure. Oh. This brochure is not fully proofed yet, but I would love your thoughts on the letter, page three. It's a lot more work than I thought. What would you change to make it sound more like you? Are you able to have this back to me by Monday? Thank you very much. I'll look at page three. Two, three. Hey, listeners. The Mark. Okay, I'll probably read this later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, Katrit. Gina said she left her Gracie Award for me on Kevin's card. <laughs> what? I wrote on her card, hey, are you taking your Gracie Award if, with you? If not, can I have it? Yeah. So she emailed me and said, the Gracie Award is outside your studio. No way. <laughs> <laughs> She's funny. Uh, Barb says, Hannah, <sighs> Joy Reid has never changed a tire. She would be screaming, I need inflation. I need inflation. <laughs> <laughs> Barb, that was hilarious. Funny, Barb. That was hilarious. Inflation, inflation. Oh, that was so good, Barb. Oh, sadly, Jennifer, I think I think you're right. I think that that's what they think. Jennifer says we're just simple peasants in their eyes. Peasants. What is Pat talking about? Uh, the Pat. How do you make it through a security gate with no gun? Yeah, no. She she said something about a gated community. Blah oh. blah blah. I mean, I'll be honest with you, gated communities ain't that tough to get. Through. Yeah, pretty much. Show. My name is Mark K. 855 mark is our number. With my birthday next week, all I want, all I will ask is that there is that red tsunami that everybody's predicting. I think it's heading this way. I think it's going to sweep over and just leave America just covered in red. MAGA red. The red wave that's coming is going to be like the elevator doors opening up in The Shining. <laughs>
That is probably, again, from Joe Rogan's lips to God's ears. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of people going out and voting. Vote, vote, vote. Uh, make sure that if you're not around on Tuesday, you vote earlier. Make sure that if you can on Tuesday, make sure you go out and vote. Watch your ballot the whole way. Make sure you take all the other people. You know those slacker friends of yours that are like, oh, yeah, when's election day again? Make sure that they're ready. Hannah knows who I'm talking about. I do. That they, like four people's names popped into your head. Yeah, right so out, right? many. Yeah. It's like there are some people, they, they, they know there's an election sometime, but they're not really sure when it is. And Tuesday's going to roll around and you're going to be like, hey, did you vote? And they're going to be like, is that today? No, I can't get there. I got this thing. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Nip them in the bud. Be like, you can early vote right now. Yeah, or just, like drag them with you, whatever. Say, hey, meet me for coffee on Tuesday morning. I have some juice. <laughs> you know, I have some hot goss. As hot Hannah. goss. Yeah, like call your slacker friends and say, guys, you're not going to believe what happened to me this weekend. Meet me Tuesday at this location, and I will tell you all the hot goss. Or just pick them up with coffee or and drive yeah. them there. And then drive them to the polling location <laughs> and make them vote. Uh, because it's very, very important. The red wave only happens if everybody that goes out there and votes for conservative candidates. 855-940-MARK is our number. This is uh, Pat in Jacksonville. Pat, hi, how are you? Thank you so much for calling the Marcasia. What's up, Pat? Hey, Pat. Or, I'm sorry. Hey, Mark. Hey, no problem, Mark. I mean, Pat. <laughs> I know. You're, I'm excited to talk to you, too. I'd go, what's uh, what's on your mind, Pat? What do you want to say? I have a question. How does one stray Canadian manage to penetrate not just the security of a gated community in the upper class of San Francisco, yeah. but the security of the Speaker of the House, who you've got to be kidding me, she has a security detail, and I'm sure she has her own private security, considering the multi-millions of dollars they've made off of insider trading. Look, Pat, that happen? it's a really interesting question. It really, and I want, I've thought, listen, the gated community, depending on the gated community, listen, it's not all that hard to get into gated communities. I mean, they, like they let Uber guys in without driver's licenses. So that's easy. But the security around Nancy Pelosi's house, as you pointed out, this is not the, the usual low end parts of San Francisco that are crime ridden. This is high tech. There are government installed cameras around the perimeter of this house that actually caught the intruder on tape. However, nobody that was supposed to be watching them was actually watching them. He smashed the window and no alarm went off, which I'm going to be honest with you in these high profile alarm systems. Sure. You need to turn on the alarm so that when the door opens and you, uh, you haven't turned off the alarm, it'll sound, but there are also high tech systems. One would think where as soon as glass is broken or shattered, or there's a vibration, an alarm would sound. And yes, with the hundreds of millions of dollars that the Pelosi's have at their disposal, you would think you, I mean, I told my wife, I said, look, we're buying Powerball tickets. And if we win $1.5 billion, the first thing I'm going to do is call a private security firm. And I want at least one guy or girl, I'm not, I don't care, at least one person who is trained and heavily armed standing outside my house 24 seven. That's the first thing I want. And I'm not even, you know, I'm not even, I'm not even important. I'm not even second in line to anything. Usually I'm like second in line to the bathroom. That's all I am. Uh, so, yes, it is a little bizarre that these folks would be in that situation. What's even more bizarre is learning today that when the police arrived after Paul Pelosi called them from the bathroom, he was the one, Paul Pelosi, who opened the door. And when he opened the door, which clearly this, this, uh, this you know, uh, David DePappy was, allowed him to do, he didn't lunge at the police and say, help. He didn't say, emergency, I'm being held hostage. He didn't say, thank God you're here. He didn't try to run past them to safety. He said nothing, turned around, walked back into the house toward David DePappy. And it was the police who said, is everything okay? That's when, you know... This stuff went down. A lot of questions. A lot of questions, Pat. Hey, thanks so much for the call. Quick break. We will be right back. Yeah. What? I just did. I just went like that. Okay. Ooh, that's a good point, Brenna. Brenna says, I'm starting to think uh, we should really bring 
be old fashioned from here on out and bring back the never tell who you're voting for thing. Now I see why my grandparents were so adamant that you never tell people who you're voting for. Why? So people don't beat you up? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. Anna, do you shoot guns? Yes. Not at the same time. <laughs> what? Even the new Lot and Order DA is not releasing any footage, says Liquor Giant. Darlene says, makes you wonder who was holding who hostage. Ooh, Ooh makes you wonder. <laughs> Marie says, I find it weird. I had someone in my house called police from bathroom dispatch. Kept asking me if I could hear the person upstairs. I'm like, I'm not leaving the bathroom till police are here. Officers are outside. I ran out the door straight to the officers. See, yeah, I think it's weird. I completely agree. I just talked to Mr. Frank, and he wanted me to uh, see if you could put out there um, if you have any friends that are in a wheelchair or can't get to a place to vote, um, just to reach out to them and see if they need a ride or whatnot. Great idea. Who's Mr. Frank? Frank Rim. Oh. Got it. Kim McFarland says, I always believe the first story when it comes out in the raw. The updated versions are lies. I believe there was a third person in the house. Ooh. <clears throat> it was Hillary Clinton. <gasps> dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Just found out that my 14-year-old daughter, Samantha, made the state all-star team in volleyball. Proud mommy moment. Oh, Jennifer, congratulations to your daughter. That's awesome. Uh, Celestial says, I would like to know why he is getting charged with attempted kidnapping. No one was kidnapped. That's right, but it was but attempted. But it was attempted. Because, you know, zip ties. Yeah. If you have zip ties, it's attempted kidnapping. Moral of the story? Get when you're breaking zip ties. In, When you're breaking into someone's house, don't bring zip ties. Oh. <laughs> hmm, I had some in here. Zip ties? Yeah. Yeah, there were zip ties in there. Well, dang. Well, Kidna kidnapper. The question is, is, did somebody come in here and take them, or did I use them already? Did Wouldn't you know if you used them? Hmm. Nope. Yep, oh, well. <laughs> Billy, I normally went to the pepper mill or um, Silver Legacy.
do do boo boo boom. <laughs> what are you typing? Typing questions. Oh. <coughs> are you sick? No. Are you lying? <laughs> I'm not sick anymore. <laughs> I'm still a little contested. Though. Anymore. I know, did you like that? <laughs> <laughs> Teresa said Tom took Jay's zip ties. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Brenna wants to know if we can have an extra hour so she can do her nails. Oh. Brenna. Well, you have one more hour. Yeah. Do you yeah. Start doing your nails now. Do your nails. You got one hour to do your nails. <laughs> you good, homie? Me? Yeah, you. You exhaled so heavily. Well, you know. I know. I want everyone to know I'm still breathing. <laughs> Thank you. Alive. I was really concerned. Still kicking. So glad. Aaron said, but you're not sick any less, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well nice. played. Well played. Love it. Very, very funny. Proud of you. And we're back in five. Ooh, okay. I don't know what that noise was. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. Hey, Mark K, I bought tickets, actually a table for your Mark K ho, 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 hold them. But I need to know if one of my peoples that I listed doesn't show up, if I can use an alternate. That's a great question. That's a great question. And one that I, first of all, thank you so much for buying an entire table. And I'm telling you, if you've got friends or if you've got a company, uh, that's what that's the way, that's what a lot of people do. They buy a table because it's much, much um, I don't want to say cheaper, but it's a much better investment. Not only do you get to come with eight people to the tournament, treat them to dinner, treat them to an open bar for a couple of hours, get them entry into the tournament where any one of them could win $1,000. Not only does all that happen and you get your own table for your own peeps, but you get two free tickets because each ticket to the tournament is one price, but a table is uh, eight tickets for the cost of six. So like I said, even if uh, even if you're not a big company or a, you know a highfalutin person that wants to spiff your friends get together collect all the money buy a table it's a great way to help charity come out for our tournament and um and save a little bit of cash now to answer your question what happens is if you buy a table we will just give you the eight tickets when you arrive yes we're going to ask you for names when you register but if you don't have all the names or if you don't know who's coming yet no problem you just put guest one guest two or just you know, make up and throw out some like Alexandra Ocasio Cortez, throw that in there. Uh, you know, Leonard Skinner, whatever you wanted. Hannah Hickox, it's a, it's a good one. Uh, yeah. Throw those names in there as placeholders. And then when you arrive, we'll be like, here's your eight tickets. Please make your way to table number whatever. If you buy a single ticket, or, you know, a lot of people come as a couple, they buy two tickets, we'll just have your name at the door and, um, and you'll be ready to go. Now, something, Hannah, that I should point out, which is very important. We do not allow walk-ups for this tournament. No walk-ups? There's no walk-ups. The reason Why? for that is, the reason for that is, this tournament is held at Best Bet uh, Poker uh, Room on Monument Road, right. which is one of the biggest and most sought-out destinations all over the country for, uh, you know, both both uh, weekend poker, and poker players and also professional poker players. Right. So what we found out in the first year or so was that if we allowed walk-ups, there were pros in the room who saw this as an opportunity to maybe make some easy that. money yeah. and they want and they weren't in it for the kids they weren't in it for the camaraderie they were in it to win it and it showed and it it soured a couple of the uh you know 
a couple of the uh, but a sour taste in your mouth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. There was a, almost a fight one time between Jackson Deville. It was great. Wait, it, we, was there? Well, you know, we smoothed it all out, but okay. that's what happens. Um, so anyway, we said no walk-ups, and now it's all it's all just patriots. It's all just folks who want to have a good time, uh, you know, uh, have some drinks and have fun. So you don't have to worry about some poker pro coming in and trying to bust you because they think you're a, you're an easy mark. Yeah. Um, you yeah. think you're better than me? I'm an easy mark. I'm just saying. <laughs> Literally. Eight five five nine four zero mark is our number. Eight five five nine four zero mark. And if you want to get those tickets, like I said, we've never started this early. We've never had this much, uh, it, um, you know, reaction and. response response so quickly so these table right now there's six full tables remaining um a bunch of individual tickets but if this is something you want to take advantage of if this is something you want to be part of if you want to be there with us for our ho ho hold'em charity poker tournament on december the 1st to benefit k's kids uh go this weekend it's payday go now 855-940 mark and of course everything you purchase is 100 tax deductible as a donation to dreams come true incorporated of north florida 855-940 mark is our number this is doug in dayton ohio what's up doug how's it going oh pretty good how about yourself oh doing great man what's on your mind doug what's going on well i gotta I have a comment about those crybabies which crybabies twitter. oh at twitter yeah the twitter crybabies yeah yeah what's your comment i used to work for general motors and the operative word meaning used to yeah because i've been retired for 19 years okay i was laid off two times in my 30 years yeah in the first time I knew that I was going to get laid off was the Thursday before the Friday that I was go that I got laid off. My boss came up to me and said, "You get a free trip to personnel." When I got to personnel, they said, "Give us your pass. You're being laid off." Hmm. So I was only like 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. And then Boom, I was out the door. Was that in Detroit by any chance, or was that up there? No, in, it was in Dayton. It was in Dayton, yeah. That's in Ohio. Um, in, yes. in California and in New York, apparently they have these laws where you have to give people 90 days warning in New York and 60 days warning in California before you lay them off, which to me, I'm going to be honest with you, if you quit, you only have to give them two weeks notice. So I don't even know, I don't even know right, what that's, that's all a, about. That's a lot of time for... You know, to be crybaby in about 60 yeah. to 90 days. Also, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a lot of time for you to, you know, download emails and <laughs> sensitive documents. Oh, yeah. And I always thought that if you were laying people off, you just locked them out of the building, especially with a tech company and especially with somebody as hated, hated as uh, as Elon Musk. Doug, thanks. so much. By the way, Doug, what did you do? Did you work on the line for GM? What kind of cars did you uh, Yes, I did. I worked in, uh, well, I worked all over the plants. We had a Dayton plant and yeah. a Vandalia plant. Yeah. Is it true and that is it true that when, they, when when my bosses upset me, I go from one plant to the other. <laughs> I never did it. I never worked in one department oh. more than a year. Yeah, and that way I was lucky enough not to have carpal tunnel. Yeah, no, because that's... I knew people that worked in the same job for fifteen, twenty years, oh. and they were always complaining that their hands hurt. Yeah. Yeah, did, let me ask you this. Did they get carpool tunnel because they worked at General Motors? Well, I... Thank you. Sorry, it's carpool tunnel syndrome because you got No, a, I got it, like a carpool. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, or just, yeah. Eight, <laughs> man, but how great is that? Every time he got annoyed with one of his bosses, he'd go work in a different department? Isn't that great? I want to do that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, forget you guys. We're going to KRMG for a week. <laughs> By the way. How great would that be? It would be lovely. When you said the whole thing about the badges and locking people out, my badge didn't work one time, and I was like, oh, no, this I'm fired. <laughs> I thought it. <laughs> yeah, my badge uh, my badge is getting weathered. I've had. I've been here for 15 years, yeah. and I've had the same badge. You can't even see my face on it anymore. That's been for... That's the same badge you've and had still the works? whole time. It still works. Wow. I, you know, you uh, haven't had hair for fifteen years. But no, I haven't had hair forever, really. But it's you. Know, but it's wearing down. So now what happens is I have to. I used to just be able to <laughs> hold it within like half an inch of the scanner. I could scan it and it would open. Now I have to like slam it against the thing and <laughs> rub it five times, and then you know. I thought you had to get a new badge for the new building. You didn't have to get a new badge. 
fit in a hand. Look, does this look like a new badge no, to you? No, it looks very old. I've had this for 15 years. That I was grand. Uh, I was you, uh, grandfathered in. Do you have to blow on it like like you used to have to <laughs> with the uh, Nintendo cartridges? Yeah, yeah, there you that's go. exactly right. <laughs> All right, baby, come on. You rub it on your uh, rub it on your jeans, your so you jeans? get the uh, yeah, you get a little uh, the static the static cling. Yeah. Eight five five nine four zero Mark is our number. Eight five five nine four zero six two seven five Mario's in Palm Coast. Hi, Mario. How are you? Hey, Mark. Hey, Hannah. Great job. I really enjoy listening to you guys. Well, Mario, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. What is on your mind today, sir? Well, you know, during the last election, you know, we heard hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, problems yeah. with the voting. Yeah. We had in Pennsylvania where there was a leak in the middle of the night and they had to stop counting and people pulling it with carloads full of ballots and stuff like that. My question is this. Have we learned anything or do we have any provisions in place to avoid that from happening again? Uh, by we, you mean here in Florida, or you mean we... Well, I'm talking about presidents in general. I mean, Republicans yeah. are independent because these were nationwide problems we were having. Yeah. And, you know, where you had to be on the other side of the glass, and then they put up newspapers so you can see what they were doing. I mean, um, hopefully we learned something from that last election. Yeah. But have we? Well, Mario, it's it's an interesting question, and this is where this is where you get the pros and the cons list. Um, elections are run by individual states. Every one of the states runs its own elections. And that causes some problems, like you said, for example, in Pennsylvania, in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where they were locking people out. In, um, you know, in, uh, you know, in Florida years ago, there were elections, count there were problems counting the, the dimpled ballots and the dimpled chads, whatever. Georgia, just last time around, I mean, forget about it, not only in the general election, but in the, in the uh, secondary election, because nobody got 50% of the, of the vote, and we ended up with Ossoff and Warnock. All of those things are state problems. Now, the good news about that is because our elections aren't federalized, one problem in one place only affects that particular state. Now, the bad news is in a presidential election where one or two electoral votes can alter the course of history, yeah, you want every state to be buttoned up. But think about the danger of federalizing a system. If the election system were federalized and Joe Biden and the Democrats were in charge of federal elections, one, we'll call it a mistake, but one oversight, one piece of trickery, one dubious act could, uh, re could uh, cause a chain reaction throughout every state and every election. So for the, the, uh, for the greater good, keeping the elections um, in the, uh, the hands of the individual states is way better. Because especially in a time like now, when you're looking at this election, the reason why Everybody is declaring this red wave. The reason why the midterms are usually a big, uh, you know, switch of party control in Congress is because it's very difficult difficult to go through and do in all 50 states what may or may not happen in 2021 in just two or three. Again, if you're if you want to fix the general ele election for president, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, boom, you're done. But if you want to do it for the entire House of Representatives and the entire Senate, you've got to go state by state. Now, to answer your question, a lot of states have done a lot of great things. Uh, you may remember in Texas, there was a battle that saw all of the Democrats in the Texas House flee because they were going to be arrested for dereliction of duty. They refused to come to the Capitol building and vote. Governor Abbott said, I'm going to arrest you, bring you down here, force you to vote on this thing. And they all left and lived in a hotel in Washington, D.C., where they tweeted out photos of their dirty drawers that they were washing in the bathroom sink and e the uh, Diet Cokes and Caesar salads that they were eating because... The, uh, they wouldn't want. They didn't want to come back and do their jobs. Eventually, they came back and they voted and they and they helped to secure the elections in Texas. In Georgia, Governor Kemp, after 2020, worked diligently. And you may remember he lost. Was it the All Star Game? I want to say the the uh, the All Star Game pulled out of Georgia. Coca Cola caused a huge commotion. People were boycotting Delta because Delta Airlines refused to jump in. They said that they were trying to disenfranchise Black voters in Atlanta when really all they were trying to do was shore up their election laws and make them more secure. In Florida, the first thing Governor DeSantis did after he got elected by a razor-thin margin because these ballots kept popping up in the middle of the night, the first thing he did back in 2018 was make sure that our elections ran smoothly. And that's why in 2020, you may remember, Florida ran flawlessly. And the election results in Florida came in so quickly and they were so accurate 
that nobody could believe it. And the major networks refused to call Florida. Even the election returns were in by like 9, 930. They refused to call Florida until much later in the evening uh, just because, you know, well, Florida had a history of election stupidity. So on a state level, yes, a lot of things have happened. In Pennsylvania, are the elections safe and secure? Don't know. You still got Democrats in charge of that state. Wisconsin, a lot's been done. We're going to have to see. New York, California, well, those states usually glow, go blue anyway, but uh, there's a real chance that Lee Zeldin could pull it out if the election is truly free and fair. So the important thing to remember is your local elections, your statewide elections, your state senators, your state representatives, they are so important because those are the people that will make sure that you need an ID to vote, that you can't mail in your vote without a signature and have it counted, that you can't ballot harvest, that drop boxes will have cameras, that there won't be early voting for 92 weeks, that all of these stipulations that they can make to safe uh, to uh, secure our elections and make sure that every real legitimate vote is counted, um, that's all on the state level. Hey, thanks so much for the call. We appreciate it. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Quick break. We'll be right back. Oh, no. What just happened? That didn't happen. Wait, do I have all the questions? Yeah. No. I mean, no? I don't have all the answers. Oh, Okay. Did you not like the answers I came up with? No, no, I, I'm, you know, I'm just putting my own spin. Putting you a little spinny you spin on it? You built a great foundation, Hannah. I'm okay with this. I'm just redecorating. No, 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 that's fine. Moving the pillows, <laughs> you know. I don't know what that was. Did you hear that? Bizarre. Oh, you know what? Because I have to leave right at three. I'll be right back. But don't worry, I have my okay. laptop with me. So we're good. Part-timer. Oh, people are talking about food again. Who I'm is? Hungry. Who's talking about the food? Brenna. What kind, of, what kind of food are they talking about? Uh, she was going to make a Mississippi pot roast with Ooh. this buffalo roast. What's a Mississippi? What's a, I don't what know. are those? But it sounds delicious. It sounds delicious. Oh, crikey. Crikey. Oh. Dingo stole the baby. Nancy Lynn wants to know where Hannah is. That's a personal question. Yeah. She left. She's uh, taking a personal moment. Do Hannah things. What do I want to smoke this weekend? On the grill. Oh. On the bobby. Don't talk about me. We weren't, we literally weren't. No, I was kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Hello. What's up, part timer? Excuse you. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> uh, today was supposed to be my eye appointment in Florida Renegade, um, but I just moved some things around. Hmm. What? That actually does sound very good. The Mississippi pot roast. It's pot roast meat 
a jar of pepperoncini or banana banana peppers, au jus gravy mix, a packet of Hidden Valley Ranch mix, and water. Cook low and slow all day. Mm, low that and slow. sounds delicious. A half return. <laughs> Hannah, did you go out there to tell them to hush up? No, I... No. Oh. <clears throat> they were all gone by then. <laughs> they heard the door open. They scattered. To quote. That's right. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they thought it was Mark and he's the... Or you. <laughs> oh, wait. Did I download the thing? You know the thing. You know the thing. I did. Do you ever listen to The Office Ladies? Uh, the podcast? Yeah. No, but I heard it's great. I listened to it a little bit today. Is that the one with uh, Pam and Angela? Yes. And, uh... Joy, I'm curious... It, it was really... I don't, know, I don't know if it was a typical episode, but... The red wave exciting? that's coming. It was interesting. I watched, or I listened to the New Girl podcast, and I was like, this is very boring. They were talking about when Toby had to go... Um, serve on jury duty because of the Scranton Strangler. Uh-huh. <laughs> and what Jenna Fisher... <sighs> to quote Jeremiah Wright, Biden's chickens are coming home to roost. Loving it! <laughs> that's, another, that's another great saying, too. How the turntables... Yeah, eight five, eight five five nine. Wait, I forgot the, well, well, well. Well, well, well. There it is. How the turntables. Yeah. Eight five five nine four. Oh, Mark is our number. I haven't read all one thousand and fifty pages of the FBI whistleblowers report that I printed off this morning. I've read about ten, so only one thousand forty pages left to go. Yeah. But if I were in Congress. If I were in Congress, if I were a congressional Republican uh -huh. and they asked me to write a subsection of this, I would have included that particular quote from Michael Scott, Michael Scott Paper Company, somewhere in this document. <laughs> well, 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 how the turntables. I would have put that maybe on page 940 because uh, that's just the kind of guy I am. Also, probably one of the reasons I'm not in Congress. 855-940, Mark. Well, 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 well. <laughs> How the turntables. Hey, hey, Roy in Jacksonville. How you doing, Roy? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Oh, good, good. What's going on, sir? What do you want to say today? Well, concerning the uh, lawsuit out in California against Twitter concerning the mass layoff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a federal law. Yeah. 29 U.S. Code, sections 2100 and sequence. That says that if an employer lays off more than 50 people or more than 500 in different cases, uh, they have to give at least 60 days notice before the layoff. Otherwise, the fired employee can sue the employer and get basically 60 days pay. 60 days pay. Let me ask you a question here. Uh, is, it, is it 50 people or 50% of the workforce? No, it's 50 people. Wow. If, uh, hold on a second. There's a quick part here. Yeah. Uh, if the 50 people constitutes more than, I think, a third of the workforce, yeah. it's 50 people. Right. If you have more, if 50 people does not constitute a third of the workforce, then the, the amount that gets laid off has to be 500, and it doesn't matter if the 500 is all of your workforce or only 10% of your workforce. Got it. If so more than 500, right? Uh, you have to comply with this thing. So and, you're thinking there that they could all request 60 days worth, so two months worth of salary. Right, plus any benefits like health care, blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's say he's laying off half his worth workforce, 3,500 people times, I don't know, let's say $20,000 for two months. That's only That's a lot of money, 70 mil. That's almost what he spent on his new jet. <laughs> Maybe flying commercial. Okay, I want to hear what they were saying about Toby going to jury do it, duty. Oh, Hannah. What did you forget to do? 
Um, all right, we'll do it in a minute. So oh, what they did we... was they, uh, that's okay, we'll do it in a minute. We have time. Okay. Uh, what they did was, she said, Toby was going to jury duty. Yeah. And she goes, I looked it up, and here are here's what Toby would have experienced had he gone to jury duty in Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania. Oh, like what would have actually happened? And she happened? literally was just reading the FAQs for jury duty in Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania. And I thought to myself, this has literally nothing to do with the office. To do with the office, like I think I thought maybe are they just trying to find a way to like really extend yeah, the I life think, of that podcast? I think they were like, wow, we've uh, we've run out of stuff to talk, or we want to make sure we have like an hour long podcast, but we only have like twenty minutes worth of information. So so she was like reading off. So had Toby really gone to the first, he would have had to arrive at eight forty five a.m. and parking would have been provided. He would have gotten a valet or a uh, ticket to be um, validated. If they know their fans, they would know that we do not care about Toby going to jury duty. I'm like, I, yeah, I was like, that was not. I thought it was weird. <laughs> But then I listened to it. So <laughs> I mean, who's weird? So who's the chump? Yeah. <laughs> Who got who's the sucker now? Dang. Yeah, I know. It was really weird. But then, you know, but I have heard uh I listened once before and it was interesting. They talked to you know, you learned some stuff about the episode. Yeah. But um, yeah. That's wild. There was something <clears throat> interesting in the New Girl podcast. Um we couldn't get through the more than one. Anyway, mm. but we got through one, and it was interesting because uh, Jess, Zoe Deschanel, was saying, she's like, you know, there's so many things that fans bring up or, like, quote to me, like, I'm supposed to know it. She's like, and I just I don't even know it. And I was like, don't say that you don't love new girls as much as we did. And it made me really sad. I'm sorry. It's okay. I saw she's, uh, yeah. saw she's dating one of the property brothers. She is. Oh, she is? Yeah. yeah. Which one, the real estate guy or the construction Jonathan? guy? I don't know. He's the real estate guy, I think, right? They both look the same to me. Well, they're twins. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, one wears a suit and one wears flannel. That's the only way you can tell them apart. I don't know. That was so funny. Okay. Man, those damn identical (laughs) twins can't tell them apart. Uh, Uh, I'm going to... Okay, I'll shout you the answer from them. Oh, great. I can't wait. I can't can't handle you. Oh, I misspelled Zoe. (laughs) How do you spell Zoe Dation? I can't find it. I know I follow her. It's like D E S C H A. Zoe Deschanel. There you go. Oh, she has two O's. That's why I forgot. Ah. Uh, it's Z O O. Kim Neff Burnett says she's dating Flannel. Yeah, Jonathan. Oh, I was right. I'm impressed. No, Flannel. What? Like flannel shirt? Yeah. Okay. I was proud of myself for remembering Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> Florida Renegade. <laughs> B. Crespin quoted Mark, well, they're twins. <laughs> 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 that was so good. Makes me sad, though, because, like, these lighthearted TV shows, I get so excited to watch them, and then... I find out about their actual, like, actors, and they're super liberal, and it's always disappointing. It's fine, though. So what's the other one's name? Oh, I didn't know the other one's name. So she's dating the construction guy. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'll tell you what the other one's name is. Uh, Drew. Drew and Jonathan. Drew and Jonathan. Got it. Yeah. Those guys are so rich. They're so rich. I heard they're, like, two of the richest people in Canada. Is he Canadian? They're Are both, they both? They're, they're can- both Canadian. Well, yeah, obviously. The show takes place in Toronto or something. Oh, I didn't realize hmm. that. Yeah, a bunch of those shows are Canadian. Um, I did not know that. Is it because they speak English? <laughs> <laughs> I need. <laughs> I just spit all over my microphone. <laughs> All right. They have a combined <clears throat> net worth of two hundred million dollars. Holy crap! Are you kidding me? I mean, according to the internet, so I think. Oh yeah, that's true. They say you're worth a million dollars. That was like a few years ago. About that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know. I'm kind of annoyed. That's when I realized the internet was BS. One of those sites had my net worth. Get this, my net worth. I was, remember. I did see that. It was between like two hundred thousand and six million. I remember that. <laughs> and I'm like, and I was that's like, come on. <laughs> 
That's like those psychics that go, uh, I'm seeing a man, a woman, a child. A child? Yes, okay. And it's a boy, it's a yeah. girl. It's a girl, yeah. And her name is uh, Jessica I'm, Tabitha. I'm, uh, I'm picking up Hillary. an R, an yeah. R, an anybody, R. No. anybody <laughs> in the crowd. And is there an R? Robert? Yeah, Robert, right. <laughs> I'm sensing oh, a father man. figure. Yes, that's right. That's right. You're, you need, uh, you're here because uh, you want more fulfillment, you want more money. More money, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Jesus. Oh, um, Mark K. Net Worth 2022. Hmm, what's, what, how much am I worth now? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because your net worth is nowhere near this. Eight hundred and fifty million. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I didn't know you were a Snapchat star. Since when are you rewarded like most Hollywood celebrities? That's funny. Eight hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> Even if I won the Powerball jackpot this week, after taxes, I still wouldn't be worth $850 million. <laughs> oh. That's fantastic. I wonder if I can sucker people into believing I'm worth that much and get, like, a really big loan. That, you should. They're <laughs> like, hey, do you have any collateral? Yes, look at those, this website. It says <laughs> Idol Watch or whatever. What is it? Where? Are, what crazy website are you on? This is on Idol Net Worth. <laughs> That's so funny. What are you ranked in the... <laughs> Before fame, he graduated from New York University with a degree in film production and political science. He began working in radio when he was 20 years old. Truth. That's all true. Also, trivia, he grew up in the cigarette capital of the world. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That they ripped off of my first bio. Yeah. I, I wrote that. That's all they did. It's just a bot. Bot. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K. For three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Marque Show. Beat. Hey, BT Dubs. Sorry, Keith. Uh, we forgot to solicit for Weekend Review Trivia because this show goes so gosh darn quickly that we forgot it was time for Weekend Review Trivia. So if you have been listening to this show all week long, if you've been taking in every word, if you've heard every story, if you've laughed at every joke, if you've scratched your head at all the things that have come out of Hannah's mouth over the past week, then this is the game for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call right now, 855-940-MARK, 855-940-6275. We need two contestants. Two contestants, we will ask you questions, but not questions you can find the answer to anywhere on, or on the planet. These are questions you must have listened to the show to know the answers to. So this is for the diehard Catriots, the ones that are with us every single day, three hours a day, noon to three Eastern, 11 to two Central, um, and uh, you streaming online, following us on, on Facebook and, and Instagram and everywhere else. Um, this is a game specially designed to reward you and your loyalty and for us to say thanks. 855-940-MARK is the number to get through. In the meantime, I forget how we got on the topic, but uh, during the commercial break, we started talking about money and celebrity and I think Elon Musk paying off Twitter employees and then it got to the Property Brothers and, and it ended with Hannah Googling Mark K. Net Worth, which we do. <laughs> this is funny. We do this from time to time. Yeah. And at one point in time, I was worth something like $3 million or something like that, right? Wasn't that or $1 million? It was like... Yeah, I was like, or they said like two million, and I was like, oh, that's that's you know, not at all accurate. Then okay. there was another time where I googled it, and it came up with a range, but it was the most ridiculous range. It was like six hundred thousand to nineteen million yeah. range. I go, well, that's the horror. That's like basically they they're saying they have like, no okay, idea. Okay, we're guessing. Yeah, <laughs> but Hannah just moments ago stumbled on a brand new website that's <laughs> guesstimating my celebrity net worth. Hannah, please tell everybody what website is this? Uh, it was Idol something. Idol something. Uh, I-D-O-L, not I-D-L-E, right? Yeah. Okay. Idle something. And what did they say? Hold on. Let me get a drum roll for this because it's a good one. <laughs> Hannah, according to idlesomething.com, what is Mark K's net worth in 2022? $850 million. <laughs> it was idle net worth. Yeah. $850 million. Hey, can I borrow like five bucks? <laughs> How about five mil? <laughs> yeah, I, just a little bit. Just uh, five mil. Fun fact. If I were worth $850 million, let's just <laughs> let's just say there'd be a lot of changes around this place. Yeah. Uh, like, first of all, we wouldn't be around this place. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. All right, listen. Are you guys ready for week in review trivia? Oh, yes. All right, here we go. Yeah, boy. 
We got some contestants on the line. Looks like we've got Katie. Katie's in California, or is that Canada? Where are you, Katie? I'm in California. You're in California. All right, Katie. Hey, welcome to the program, Katie. We're so glad you're here. Uh, where in California are you? Um, Knightson. It's kind of the Bay Area in the country. Oh, kind of um, the Bay Coastal, Area. Like, you know, Concord. Yeah, it's not really in San Fran. It's kind of out in the boonies. Are you near the vineyards? Uh, no, kind of no. more like Concord. Have you heard of Concord, Ponte Costa? Yeah, no, I, I have. Yeah, there. okay. Jay has, so one out of three ain't bad. All right, uh, Katie, <laughs> you're going to be playing against Chris, who's in Fort Worth, Texas. Chris, how are you? I'm doing terrific. How are you today, Mark? Oh, doing very well. I just found out I'm worth $850 million. So that was a boon. That was a great way to start the That's weekend. That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris, Katie, Katie, Chris, have you both been listening to the show all week long? Yes, I have. Absolutely. Uh, all, all, th oh. all three hours, all five days, I hope, because that's the only way you're going to get to know the answers to these questions. Uh, and like I said, we, we make a multiple choice, so it makes it a little easier. And if you know anything about us, sometimes you can use process of elimination. That's true. But uh, what's going to happen is whoever gets the most right will win a Mark K. Show prize pack filled with all kinds of uh, fantastic Mark K. Show swag. Sounds pretty cool, right? Oh, yeah. Whoa, look at that. Katie's Great. excited. All right, uh, Katie, we're going to start with you. Are you ready? I think so. Here we go. Monday was Halloween. Hannah came dressed up in a costume. Shocking. What was Hannah dressed as? A, a wizard. B, a lumberjack. Or C, SpongeBob SquarePants. I believe it was A. You believe it was A, a wizard. Well, not a wizard, but she was wearing that tie and everything. So I know she was from Harry Potter. And Harry Potter was a wizard. Uh, well, no, he wasn't a wizard. Mm -hmm. so maybe that wasn't the right answer. I thought it was A. Yeah, no, it's A. I'm just. Oh, yeah, Harry cool. Potter. Harry, Harry Potter was a wizard. Yeah, don't don't talk You're yourself a wizard, out. Of it. I was just, Harry. Yeah, a wizarding world of Harry Potter. Isn't that yeah. what they call? Anyway, that's all right. Katie, you got yourself a point. Good job. But I'll tell you what, another 30 seconds and I would have talked you into her being SpongeBob SquarePants. I know. <laughs> because that was really yeah. believable. All right, All right uh, Chris, here we go. Uh, you need this point to tie it up. Here's your first question. Also on Halloween, Hannah gave Jay a light up ghosty Halloween necklace. What happened when he put it on his neck? A, it choked him and he passed out. <laughs> <laughs> B, why is that funny? I don't know. Oh, my God. You're the same people that laughed when Paul Pelosi got hammered, I'm telling no. you. No. Uh, B, it gave him a terrible rash. Or C, it leaked battery acid on his Mark K. Show shirt. That would be B as in boy. It gave him a real bad rash while he was driving. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that is specific. God, he knows, the, knows the context, the subcontext. He was in uh, latitude 428 when he sent you a photo, Mark. That is, that is correct. <laughs> Chris, he gave him a big, and the rash, fun fact, in the shape of the little ghosties. Yes. That oh, was cute. Fun um, rashes. All right, uh, Katie, back to you. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, also on Halloween, Jay wore a hat that resembled the sorting hat from the wizarding world of Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, what did his hat smell like? A, a hippogriff. <laughs> B, poop. Or C, weed. Oh, my mm. God. I don't <laughs> know. No, um, what I did, don't give up easy. What did Jay's Say hat smell, smell like? A, a hippogriff. Mark. B, poop. Or C, weed. Well, all I can do is I hope it was C. <laughs> Why do you hope? What? Just study, no, I'm not it's, like better, it's better than poop, poop or whatever. That yeah, I guess it is better than poop. I guess it is better than poop. <laughs> oh, please, God, let it be weed. It was weed. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Yay for weed. Okay. Why do you want it to be C? Well, I don't want it to I be poop. I don't want to be poop. I mean, your guy already got a nasty rash from the necklace you gave him. Now he's got poop on his head? What a horrible Halloween. All right. Goodness. <laughs> Katie, you got yourself another point. Uh, good job, Chris. All right, Chris, are you ready? Absolutely. We interviewed Congressman Michael Waltz this week live in studio. Who did he say he was talking to on the phone just moments before he arrived? A, Governor Ron DeSantis. 
B, General Don Bulldog, or C, Dr. Oz? That would be B, Bulldog. That is correct. Oh, we're going to get a bunch oh, of Oh, no, dingers. we're going to get so many my, dings sorry, all my, Yeah, my dinger's stuck. Hang on, I got to... We got to restart your hockey. <laughs> I don't want to hear my dinger's stuck anymore. Hang on, just anymore. get three, two, one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, never mind. I guess it's super stuck. Chris, all right, cool. that is correct. <laughs> there it is. There you go. Yeah, they're both Green Berets, both Special Forces, both uh, about to be uh, elect, well, re-elected and elected to um, the same. Very good job, Chris. You uh, tied it up. Katie, back to you. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. Listen carefully. This year, for our Ho Ho Hold'em charity poker tournament, we sold out of our VIK tickets in just about an hour. What does VIK stand for? A. Very important catriot. B. Very impatient catriot. Mm. Or C. Very incontinent catriot. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping that it is A. And a lot of hope in here. I'm hoping it's A. That is right. It is A, yeah. I have a lot of hope. Very important. <laughs> All, right, Ob- All right, Obama. <laughs> here we go. Uh, Chris, now get back to you. Listen carefully. For Halloween, Hannah brought back her hideous and horrific history. What was the subject of her hideous and horrific history? A, Jeffrey Dahmer. B, Joseph Robinette Biden. <laughs> C, Robert the Doll. That would be C, Robert the Doll. Robert the Doll is... Come on with this thing. Thank you, Doug. Very nice of you. Yeah, good job, Chris. You're uh, tiny. You guys are doing great, by I the way. I'm so impressed. Katie, Chris, you guys are nailed. For, and you know what? It could be. There's a couple questions left. It could be that you guys do a clean sweep. And again, in the event of a tie, we will begrudgingly uh, give you both a Mark K Show prize pack. <laughs> Katie, are you ready? Woo-hoo. I am ready. All right. Listen carefully. Uh, here's the next question. Who won American Trivia Warrior this week? Surprisingly, was it A, <laughs> me, B, J, or C, Paul Pelosi? I know it's B. J? I hope so. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> oh, <this was> <laughs> it was. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 that's great. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Jay. Thank uh, you. Uh, we got to figure out what we're doing next week. Remind me. Because he doesn't get two weeks with that trophy. Oh yeah, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have to figure, we're gonna have to make we've some been, in, we're gonna have to make we'll some adjustments. We're gonna, mon- just remind yeah. me, just okay. remind me next Monday. We got to come up with a plan. All right, uh, all right, Katie, you have four. Chris, you have three. Are you ready? Yes. In addition to uh, Congressman Michael Waltz, what other political figure did we interview live on the air this week? Was it A. Congresswoman Kat Kamak? B. Secretary of State Cord Bird or C Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. It would be B. Cord Bird. Cord Bird. Is there anything you don't know about us? That's Honestly, really, that's really I'm very impressed because these are not yeah. as easy as they are sometimes. Chris is a diehard. Chris is a yeah. diehard. Don't we appreciate they are at four to four, Katie. This is your final question. You need this one to win and or tie. Okay. All right, listen carefully. Here we go. <laughs> Hannah and I both ordered <laughs> the... Ex- Sorry. <laughs> Hannah and I both ordered the exact same thing from the exact same restaurant on Wednesday. What did I receive with my order that she did not? A, a free latte. B, complimentary banana pudding. Or C, two free subs. Hmm. I have to think. I was going to say asparagus, but that's not one of the answers. <laughs> that's funny because we did talk about asparagus. I do love me some asparagus. Yeah, I breathe that stuff regularly. Uh, what? Hannah and I both ordered the same thing from the same restaurant on Wednesday. What did I receive with my order that she did not? A, a free latte. B, complimentary banana pudding. Or C, two free subs. What do you think, Katie? I'm going to say C. 
You're going to say C, two free yes. subs. Yes. That is correct. Great job. That is correct. <laughs> yeah. And I'd just like to point out for the haters that I gave her one of them. It's true. He did. Thank you. I offered her both. She only took one. I don't want to be selfish. All right, Katie. You got your <laughs> you a clean sweep. Great job uh, by, uh, you know, uh, by your own uh, you know knowledge of our show. You were able to, to get all five, which means, Chris, you need this one to tie. Otherwise, Katie is our big winner today. Are you ready? If you can afford the mailing. Yeah, no, we can. We'll make it work. Don't sure. worry. I'm worth a hundred eight hundred and fifty billion. No, million. What was it? Million. million? I'm worth eight hundred and fifty million dollars. I can afford to send you a package. But first, you got to get the question right. Are you ready? Absolutely. All right. What did I, Mark K, <laughs> suggest? <laughs> Why is that funny? We we know who you are. I know some people are just branding. Okay. Uh, what did I, Mark K, say people should yell out in public places? To try and connect with fellow Catriots. A, let's go, Brandon. B, BT dubs. Sorry, Keith. Or C, love it. it. That would be C, loving it. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Nicely done. Which means with a score of five to five, congratulations, you're both <laughs> a Mark K Show Prime. Great job. Thank you both very much, first of all, for listening. Way to go, so Katie. Oh, yeah, look at that. You guys are swell. Thank you. Congratulations, yeah. Chris. And I love watching you guys. You really have made oh. my oh. life happy in the morning. Oh, good. you know what? We, tr we try. That's all we want is to be happy. And what was the other thing she said? Enriched. And yeah, perfect. Happy and enriched. And Hannah's happy and I'm enriched to the tune of $850 million. <laughs> uh, quick break, <laughs> quick break, folks. More of the Mark K Show is coming up, I swear, right after this. Ah, that was such a good game. Oh, it was so good. Did that, did that noise alarm you a little bit? <laughs> no, no, that was good. That was good. Good All job, right. guys. Great job. I'm so impressed by our contestants. Yeah, no, they were good ones. They, they were, were good. super good. Mm-hmm. Doom ba doom ba da. Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Did you use some hand sanitizer just now? I did. Great. Cool. Cool man. Do ba do ba do ba do ba do ba do Okay, guess what? Um, uh, Valley Smokes, uh, old fashioned. Wow, fed urban. Uh, guess what Valley Smokes old fashioned is made with? Which kind of bourbon? Bullet. No. Uh, buffalo trace. Yes. Just that way. What? Nothing. What was that? No, that was funny. Thank you. Hmm? Too much sanitizer creates resistant bacteria, says Galen. Uh, yeah. My bacteria resists everything. Mm -hmm. I can go like this and it's just, it's, ah, people like, because it's resisting. Ah. I'm like a superhero. You're ridiculous. That's my name, Mr. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Did I tell you that um, Black Adam was disappointing? Mm -hmm. was I believe that? you told me that. Florida Renegade in all caps says, get out and vote. Even if it's on election day, we need a tsunami. I agree. Mm -hmm. Hannah, go look in Discord. Oh, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> go look in Discord. That is so fantastic. <laughs> what is that picture? It's from the selfie we posted, the, or I posted the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That's the best picture I've ever seen. That's great. Uh, I'm stealing that. Yeah. What are we going to do with that? I don't know. 
Uh, oh, when Doge starts uh, going up again, Doge to the moon. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Or that's anything perfect. Elon Musk slash space related. Oh, my God. That's too funny. That is V. Crespin. You've outdone yourself. Yeah, V. Crespin. So talented. Yeah. Dang. V. Crespin, great job. Great, great, great. Also, where is this lady? What lady? She goes like back up her butt sometimes. Right now? You tell her you're busy. Ty Carrick says, I would get starstruck if I called in. <laughs> Very funny, Galen. B. Crespin says, thank you, thank you, no applause, just throw money. <laughs> that was good. I don't, do you have time? Ta- do I don't think you have time. How much time do I have? How much time does he have? Minute 12. Okay. I'll count you down. Actually, Jay's going to carry you down. <laughs> no, you said you were going to do it. I can't see your clock. No. Well, huh? I'll no. just post the last segment. That's fine. Where's he going? Uh, I think just a diva. Oh. Colleen says, seven minutes to nap time. This waking up at 3 a.m. every morning for no reason sucks. Getting older is a trick. Not recommended. <laughs> I feel that. Doom, doom, bam, bam. Does that mean you're tired of adulting, Colleen? Oh, Brenna said that uh, I also almost cried when Mark hung up on me, and I wasn't and I wasn't finished with my conspiracy. Oh no! What? When was that? I don't know. We I got almost... five seconds. Brenna, when was that? Brenna, I'm so sorry. I Wait, I think I remember that. Please don't cry. K855940. Mark is our number. 855-940-6275. Thank you so much for joining us. What a great round, by the way, of uh, Weekend Review Trivia. We'd had a, I'll tell you, we've just had a fantastic week to this week. And next week, I think, is going to be even more fantastic-er. Uh, because we, what? Fantastic- fantastic-er? Fantastic-er, <laughs> fantastical. It's going to be even more fantastic. Whatever yeah. whatever the correct verbiage is, um, it's going to be that. Because uh, it's election day on Tuesday. And all day Monday, we're going to be running up to election. We're going to be talking about the last-minute polls. We're going to be taking your phone calls. We're going to be – I'm sure there's going to be candidates running around. I mean, Donald Trump is out all this weekend. He's going to be in three different states in three different days doing rallies. Oh, fun fact, by the way. I got a call from Newsmax on Tuesday. The Newsmax. The Newsmax, where the Mark K Show airs every Saturday on Newsmax uh, TV. Right. Well, they said the Mark K Show will not be airing this Saturday on Newsmax TV. Basically, <gasps> they're doing – with uh, Donald Trump having multiple rallies, and they carry – not a lot of news stations carry all the Donald Trump rallies, but they do. That's nice. Um, so they'll be carrying both the rallies. And then, of course, they said there's a lot of special election coverage. If they, you know, they were like, we, we could preempt you, but it'd be sometime in the middle of the night. So uh, no episode this week because it is the week before the election. But then next week, we're back on track. And you can see the Marque show on Newsmax TV, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. on Saturday. But Donald Trump, like I said, it's very important to watch these rallies because the word on the street is the Monday after Election Day, the 14th, he's going to make a very important announcement that he alluded to the other day in Idaho. And did much better the second time than I did the first, getting millions more votes in 2020 than I got in 2016. And likewise getting more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country by far. And now, in order to make our country successful and safe and glorious, I will very, very, very probably do it again, okay? Very, very, very probably. Update Iowa. Before everyone calls up and says... It was Iowa. 855 Hey, listen, have a great weekend, everybody. Be sure to join us back here next week, Monday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, for what's going to be one of the most exciting moments in our country's history. Uh, we're going to kick it off right then and there, right here on the Marque Show. Have a great weekend. We'll see you then.
Right. Great, great, great. Okay. We have to run, friends. Guys. It's been real. Have it's a been great fun. weekend.